All right, all right, all right, guys. Sorry for the delay in getting the stream started. I had to go ahead and get my Kraken position set up, guys. I'm definitely logging right here. We're going to be talking about that here in just a second. Let me go ahead and drag those two screens over here off screen because I don't want all of you seeing my Kraken portfolio. But, guys, I am looking very much forward to the next couple of hours here because, as you guys may have heard, Backed is clear to launch Bitcoin futures, guys. I remember when this story first broke in August of last year, almost exactly one year ago, we started getting news of Backed going live, of Backed being developed by Intercontinental Exchange. Now they have clearance to launch, guys. We're going to be diving into this news story. I don't know everything that's going on. We're going to be researching it here live. You're going to see me reading some a couple different news stories to try and get caught up on what's going on. But guys, I know from for a fact that based on what this headline says and what this article is saying, that we've got a big deal going on here. And a lot of people in the Discord server are getting very, very bullish. I know a lot of you guys are extremely bullish. I've just opened a long position. I'm really, really excited for what's about to happen here. As you guys can see on our screen, we do have a consolidation pattern that Bitcoin is currently in. I would be very, I, I'm very interested to see how this plays out. I do need to go ahead and set up. Uh, yeah, good, right there, perfect. <clears throat> All right, guys. So Bitcoin this morning, just after today's video went up, because that's how it always happens, is it not? Bitcoin broke bullish out of that consolidation pattern that we were talking about here, guys, because we did get this news dropping of backed. I would say this move has pretty much everything to do with fundamentals with this news story. This was not something that I think the technicals were predicting, but the technicals sometimes don't matter when you're seeing major uh, events happen in the bullet in, in the uh, in the news realm for, like this, guys. We're going to go ahead and catch up on chat, but I'm really looking forward to this. I think we're about to see something major happen. I think this is only one leg to the upside if this does end up carrying as much weight as I think it's going to. A lot of you guys are extremely bullish. We're going to frickin' moon soon, says Staff Sergeant of Marines. <laughs> Great name. Uh, Bitcoin's about to turn celery stalk, isn't it? Yeah, it very well might at this point. Uh, does this mean we're going to the moon? Not necessarily, but this is looking bullish for Bitcoin. Bitcoin might break bearish out of this for all I know, guys. I'm not really concerned about that. I do think that Bitcoin's going to go relatively bullish here um, over the next couple of days, depending on how big this news story is. Like I said, we're going to dive into exactly what's going on here because I need to get caught up also. I've been doing some other work, and this is just broken in the last hour. Um, I think it's going to explode, exploded. We've already exploded. I think I'm buying more. A lot of people seem to be very bullish. Um, <laughs> he likes making his weight like a girl on prom night. <laughs> um, be good if someone, um, be good if someone made good in crypto, then purchased a flight to the moon and documented it. Yeah, absolutely. 23rd of September, back to launch. Until then, keeping patience. Guys, I think the news of this has not reached its full potential. I think a lot of people haven't realized this is happening. A lot of times, the minute you see a news story like this break, you're going to see a big development on the chart. And as you guys can see, right around the time this broke, back over here on, on uh, 11.23, let's go ahead and see when this went up, 11.28, like five minutes after this news story broke on Coindesk, massive movement. This is the kind of stuff we're talking about here. I mean, literally, right down here, we were trading on 11.18. This broke on 11.18 because this is UTC, four, four hours minus UTC. The very minute that this news story went live on Coindesk is this right here. Let me go ahead and show you guys when this happened just to prove to you the importance of news. Some people say news doesn't matter, technicals or everything. This line right here is the exact minute that this news story went live on Coindesk. Before this was before the news story. All of this is after the news story. Very clearly, this has had an effect on the market. Very clearly, this movement is not necessarily because of technicals, but seemingly almost fully because of this news story. And guys, as you guys can see, we are in, in the middle of a breakout. We are in a consolidation pattern, and these are normally going to break bullish. This is normally going to be a bull pennant, which will probably be breaking in the next few minutes. Now, it's possible this breaks bearish, as a lot of people haven't gotten wind of this news story yet, but I think that this is probably going to break bullish. I'm saying that tentatively, but I think it will. Uh, back won't launch. Guys, the thing is, back, the reason back wasn't launching is because it didn't have approval from everyone that it needed to. As we can see here, the Intercontinental Exchange's young subsidiary, that being backed, announced Friday that it had acquired a New York State trust charter. That happened today through the New York State Department of Financial Services, NYDFS. This is something we've talked about in past, and it was a very big step in the right direction. The approval clears the way for the company to begin offering its highly anticipated physically settled Bitcoin futures contracts. The company intends to launch its product on September 23rd. Guys, this paragraph right here may be the most influential piece of text that we have seen 
all year. It's caused a major move here on the short-term time frame over the last hour or so, and it's likely about to cause another breakout, as we can see, and it's probably going to end up resulting in a lot of bullishness here for these next couple of weeks. I want to keep looking at this. I'm going to keep an eye on the price action sitting up here in my tab, so if anything starts to move, I will click over there as quickly as I can. Right now, Bitcoin does look like it wants to break out, but that can change. Oh, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. We're at 10,385. Let's see if this is going to go ahead and break out like we think it's going to. Let's keep up with chat. I'll get back into the news article here in just a second. I don't want to miss any big price action. Uh, TA2 Web Service says, Good afternoon, Jeb. I missed the news story part. Darn it. I don't think it's over, guys. This is one of the reasons I wanted to live stream is because this looks like a longing opportunity. I opened mine while we had the starting soon, uh, while we had the starting soon screen up. We're going to see what happens. If you think the news made it pump, then you're either uh, over-enthusiastic ju and just confident, or you don't know. Ifeni, I just showed you guys why I believe this news story caused this pump. I will show you again if you want me to, but as we can see, we are pumping right here. This news story, if you check what time all this happened, this red line right here, guys, I want to make this very clear because some people doubt the power and the impact of news stories and FOMO and everything. This is a very important lesson for you. You see this line right here? This is the exact minute. This is the exact, we're on the minute chart, guys. This this one right here, this is the minute chart. We're on the minute chart. That is the exact minute that that news story broke. Look at this, 1518. If you might, if you subtract four hours from that because we're on UTC minus four, you get 1118. The very minute that news story broke, we started to break out. I don't see how that's correlation. I don't see how that's anything but causal. Um, but yeah, guys, like I said, this may be a good opportunity to put a long in. I just got mine in just in time. I was about to sit down and kind of relax for the rest of the day. But I saw this being talked about in the Discord server. I'm like, wait a second, guys. I've got to bring this to your attention. Someone says, what's up, Jebsters? Hello, guys. RSI lost power now. It will not break. Uh, maybe 30 minutes or so. We'll see what happens. This might not break right now, but I think it's going to. Uh, we have a month to buy more Bitcoin. Yeah, you're right, guys. And one thing I want to bring up is that... Um, a lot of times what you'll see happen is that when the news story breaks of something that's going to happen in the future or when that news story of something that's going to happen in the future really starts to happen uh, um, or really starts to gain traction in the in the media, then the movement will already happen. An example of that would be uh, the Litecoin halving. Everybody got really excited for the Litecoin halving, but right around the time um, right around the time that that Litecoin halving uh, actually happened, not a whole lot had happened on Litecoin because that had already gotten factored into the price. Tell me how news can make prices pump. That's dumb. We live in a di we all live in different time zones. How can we all see the news and buy the pump at the one minute you keep talking about? Because Ifeni, no matter what time zone you're in, the news story broke for everyone worldwide at the exact same moment. The news didn't break, get, didn't cause the market to move. What caused the market to move was people getting excited and going and buying and longing Bitcoin. That's why that is moving the way that it is, is because people are very excited for the future as one of the most bullish news stories of the entire year, maybe even the last couple of years, has just been broken. This is something similar to a Bitcoin ETF being approved, guys. This is a really big win for fundamentals, and we're going to talk about it more, but for right now, we do need to keep an eye on the price chart because it does look like Bitcoin is about to have some kind of movement. We're looking at $10,415 and change at the moment. Ifania says, so who, Ifania, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to argue with you, man. And I'm not contradicting myself either. I'd love for you to tell me how I am. I'm telling you that the people that are pumping it are the people like us that are very excited, like me. I just went on exchange and bought a bunch of Bitcoin on a long position. That put buying pressure on the market. That's the same thing that everyone else is doing, and that's why the market's moving up. Um, news is a lot. Combined fundamentals and TA, that's where it's at. Absolutely. Um... Well, my green sexy diamond, yeah. Um, let's see here. Plus, it's Friday. Well, but well, of the weekend for the bulls. Weekends are typically bullish IMO. How many times have we seen this from Factor Fidelity, for that matter? Yeah, guys, that's one thing I want to mention is that this is not the same as all those other times. As far as I'm aware, guys, like I said, we need to dive into this. But this is not necessarily the same as all these other times that Back says we're clear to launch. Backed very clearly said that they are not going to be announcing any more launch dates unless they are absolutely sure that they have all the regulation and all the approval that they need. You can go back and you can look at the videos on the channel and other news articles where they're talking about that. They stated very clearly that they are not putting any more launch dates until they have the confirmation that they need. Right now, it seems that they do have the confirmation that they need, being that they are saying that they have the confirmation that they need and that they're actually putting a date on it once more. 
Uh, back first unveil, uh, I'm going to keep an eye on the price up here. Not a whole lot's going on right now. We are having a little bit of a breakout. Back first unveiled last August. Uh, back first unveiled last August, as we talked about, has been working on regulatory approvals to begin offering the product over the last year. And it tends to offer two types of contracts, a daily and a monthly contract. Both will be set, uh, settled at the back warehouse, a part of his New York chartered trust company. In a blog post on Friday... Uh, back CEO Kelly Loeffler wrote, Our contracts have already received the green light from the CFTC, CFTC, which was one of the last people that they need approval from. They needed approval from the CFTC, and they needed approval from the New York State Trust Charter. They needed those two approvals. They've now gotten both of them. Those are the last things they were stopping them from launching. It wasn't anything in the company. It wasn't any development. It was simply those two approvals that had been slowing them down and stopping them from launching in the last couple of, day, in the last couple of months. Uh, they say, Our contracts have already been giving the green light from the CFTC through the self-certification process and user acceptance testing has begun. We talked about that recently. They self um, they self approve themselves, self certify themselves because if the CFTC or other regulatory bodies don't respond to certain um, don't respond to certain um, uh, uh, applications, then after a certain window after a certain time window has passed, then you're automatically certified. They have certification from the CFTC by default, and they now have certification from the New York State Trust Charter. Those are the last two certifications they need. So this time seems to be the real deal. I know uh, BAC has talked about a lot about launching and when they're going to launch and whatnot. Right now, this does seem to be the real deal, and it does seem that this is a date that is actually going to come to pass. That's a little over a month from now. Anyway, moving on, um, we have received the green light from the CFTC through the self-certification process, and user acceptance testing has begun. That began a little while ago but they were still waiting on this approval from the uh, from NYDS uh, DFS um, with approval by the New York State Department of Financial Services to create backed trust company, a qualified custodian, the backed warehouse will, custo uh, will custody Bitcoin for physically delivered futures. She said this offer custom this offers customers unprecedented regulatory clarity and security alongside a regulated, globally accessible exchange in a market undeserved. Um, underserved, excuse me, by institutional grade infrastructure. And they're absolutely right, guys. Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets are very underserviced by institutional grade infrastructure and by well-regulated companies so that people can actually feel safe in their investments. Because guys, I feel perfectly safe working on Kraken or on Bitfinex or, or excuse me, not Bitfinex, on Binance or whatever other exchange. I feel comfortable doing that. But you have to understand there's trillions of dollars out there worth of people that don't feel comfortable doing that. They need to have that regulation because they want to be sure that some kind of government entity is telling them that, they, that yes, you are going to be safe. So luckily, BAC seems to be the first futures exchange that is going to be doing that. This is a really big deal for the development of cryptocurrency, guys. This is a major institutional on-ramp. If you guys didn't know this, might I add, the Intercontinental Exchange... They own the New York Stock Exchange. Guys, this is not just some random company. This company, Internet, the Intercontinental Exchange with the CEO of Kelly Loeffler, they own the New York Stock Exchange. There's nearly $22 trillion of market capitalization on that exchange. And it's owned by the same people that just launched Bact. You don't think that they're going to be advertising to people at the New York Stock Exchange that Bact has gone live and Bact's entire purpose is to be settling Bitcoin futures contracts? You don't think they're going to be advertising to those hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that work uh, work around and with the New York Stock Exchange? Of course they are. This is a huge win for adoption. I'm very excited about this. Let's go ahead and catch up on chat. What impacts will this have on altcoins? Honestly, with, with this news breaking, this is probably going to allow altcoins to fall by the wayside a little bit. Um, I, I wouldn't put too much emphasis on altcoins right now because Bitcoin has just had the big news story. Altcoins will follow. I'm still looking for that altcoin cycle in the future, but it's probably not going to happen just yet. Guys, if you are enjoying the live stream and you are happy about this news story, make sure you go ahead and smash that like button. Let's see if we can get up to like 75 likes real quick. We got nearly 300 of you in the chat. I'm really glad that we're live streaming right now. Really, really fun stuff. I mean, guys, this is just a really big deal. And right now, I mean, this might be a false breakout. I don't really care. I'm quite bullish on Bitcoin now that this news has come out, mainly because we have a lot of people that are bullish in the space now. So no matter what happens here, it just... Um, 22 trillion is a massive win. Yeah, it absolutely is a massive win, guys. When you consider that the market... Um, when, when you consider that all of cryptocurrency is worth like under $300 billion, that's a huge win. This is the market capitalization of all of Bitcoin, all of cryptocurrency. That right there. It's not very large. Cryptocurrency is not a very large space right now. It's going to become a very big, uh, very, very big entity after we see more institutional on-ramps like this. We have other products coming from um, coming from uh, companies like TD Ameritrade. They're working on an exchange as well. 
Um, Jesse Stra uh, Stout said, Jeb, I learned my lesson when it comes to trading. I lost over half of all my Bitcoin. I'm back to dollar cost averaging only. Yeah, man, that's going to happen to you sometimes. If you're not there yet, then that's perfectly fine. Just try and keep trading and practicing for a little bit with your... Um, with your uh, with with a very small portfolio position. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay, well, guys, I disagree with Ifeni, and I'm not very happy with the way he was talking. But at the same time, let's not mute him. I understand putting him in timeout, but don't mute him uh, from the channel because that is permanent. Thank you, moderators, for helping with this. Uh, let's see. The real re the this is really good news. If you look at the upcoming upcoming recession, safe haven is here. That's a good point. You know, I was talking about that on the Discord server last night with um, Tappily. I was actually trading with him when we did that short last night, and uh, we were talking about what will happen to Bitcoin when the recession happens. Um, should it come? You know, there's a lot of calling for recession right now, and if a recession does begin, that does bring up a really interesting question. That brings up the question: Is Bitcoin going to be a safe haven? What's going to happen with Bitcoin if and when a recession does happen? Eventually, one's going to come. We all know that. But what happens to Bitcoin when that happens? Because we haven't seen a recession in the history of Bitcoin. Guys, there's really two arguments there. You could say that either Bitcoin is going to be a safe haven and it's going to be treated like gold and that people are going to go to it and put their money there. But there's also another argument, which is during recessions, a lot of people don't tend to move towards speculative investments, and Bitcoin, as far as the traditional finance markets are concerned, is a speculative investment. I do want to go ahead and give a shout out because we do have a new subscriber. Anders K has subscribed to the channel. Guys, if you're new here and you're enjoying the content, you want to see daily cryptocurrency updates, and you want to be kept up to date on this story as it's breaking, make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you'll be updated as time goes on and new videos go out. No worries, Jeb. Just put him in a corner for 300 seconds. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think I, I, I completely disagree with you, but, but that's fine. There's nothing wrong with disagreeing with you. I don't really want you getting too upset though, because it's just not, there's just nothing to be upset about. <laughs> um, if history repeats itself the last time a Bitcoin futures desk opened on CBOE in 12, 17, 17, there was a massive bear market attached. I think that was a lot more corollary than it was causal guys. When that did open, you're right. The last time a Bitcoin futures desk opened, it was at the beginning of the last bear market. I think that was purely purely coincidental because i mean guys the 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 build up to a bear market had already started i want to talk about that because a lot of people are going to be enjoy are going to be uh wondering about that because the last time that a bitcoin futures uh, went live on cboe it was back over here on the very day that we hit all-time high if you go on bitcoin futures um and I can't ever remember how to find them because I don't look at them a whole lot. But if you come over here to all Bitcoin futures right here and you look at these CBOE contracts, they started right back here, all the way back here on the 18th, 17th of December, whatever, right here. The reason this chart doesn't go further back is because the exchange didn't exist before then. And right after it started, yes, a Bitcoin bear market didn't sue. So that does, of course, bring up the question, do futures contracts going live and do futures in general cause crashes? Do they cause recessions? Uh, uh, bear markets in Bitcoin? And I would say no. There's not really a whole lot of evidence. There's only one data point. And guys, like I said, the Bitcoin bear market, it was coming anyway, guys. The Bitcoin bear market, as far as I'm concerned, was decided. It was decided that it was going to happen right here. This Bitcoin bear market was going to come eventually anyway because we were gradually getting overextended. But at the same time, guys, when we didn't have the correction that we needed right here, this was only like a 25% correction instead of the 40% healthy corrections we had back here. And we just blasted off to the moon. We were probably going to see a bear market anyway. I remember the very first video that ever went up on this channel. You can go back and check for yourself. It's titled... Um, is Bitcoin overextended? And that video was recorded like right here somewhere. And in that video, I was telling you guys that this pullback was not very large. It was not big enough. It was not healthy. It wasn't enough to uh, exhaust the bears and allow for the bulls to push even higher. So the bulls went ahead and pushed even higher as you would expect them to when you don't have a major pullback and there's a lot of exuberance in the market. They pushed higher and the bear market started. That was going to happen a long time before the Bitcoin futures ever launched. I don't think Bitcoin futures were the cause of that. Now, there's an argument maybe to be made that they exacerbated the crash that was already happening, but I'm not even totally convinced about that. Empty Coiner says, keep missing the notification. I'm really sorry about that. Are you guys getting the notifications or did you just not see it? A recession in the U.S. reports uh, our Germany had a negative VE growth last quarter. Yeah, there's, uh, there's definitely some c concerning things going on in the global economy right now. 
Love to hear your thoughts on this. ATH at $20,000 stopped once CME came into play comparison. That's actually what we were just talking about, Matt, uh, Matt Roland. You, you may have just tuned in. Um, that happened. We hit all-time high right at the same time that uh, CBOA futures contracts started going into effect. But at the same time, that bear market was already built. I mean, the bear market had already, it, it was already decided that it was going to come after we broke through $10,000 and just kept on going without stopping even for a tank of gas, guys. We just kind of blew the top off and just, we couldn't maintain what we had done. That bear market was going to happen no matter what. We were overdue anyway. So guys, I do want to catch up with chat, but I do also want to ask you to go ahead and smash that like button if you are enjoying the live stream and you are excited about this news. We're going to get to some more stuff on this here in just a little while. I do want to catch up on chat, so if you're enjoying the live stream, make sure you smash that like button. And also guys, make sure you smash that subscribe button like our friend Brandon Lemon just did. Welcome to the channel, my friend. Welcome to the live stream. Hopefully you're having a great day, making some good profits. Let's see what's going on in chat here. Um... What's the chances of us going into a recession around the same time of the halving? I don't, I mean, that's kind of hard to answer because honestly, I don't think the two of them are correlated very much. Um, the, the halving is pretty much already predetermined when it's going to happen. It's going to happen, what, in like May of 2021? I forget exactly when when it comes. Um, Angor asks, is, it, is this a big deal? Yes, it's a very big deal. This is why I'm live streaming six hours earlier than I normally do. Um, but uh, Harley Kang says, hey, Jeb, I'm, uh, I'm seeing us in a huge bull flag of the highs and the new lows off of 9,000. Not seeing too many people talking about it, but all the TA isn't working because of the consolidation. That's something I've been meaning to talk about, actually. We had Tess talk about that in the Discord server. Guys, if you're not in the Discord server, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Click the Discord server link in the description down below and join our community over there. We've got a really great community. I, I, we had a big, um, we actually had a big debate. Uh, surrounding Bitcoin with someone named Iron Man Trading, who may or may not be in the live stream. He was yesterday, and uh, we were we were having a debate. I was just kind of sitting there listening to it, and then we uh, I did some tra some uh, live trading with a friend of ours over there named Tiffley. And uh, really great community, guys. Check that link in the description. Also, guys, if you are interested in learning how to do technical analysis, there is still the coupon code running on the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. If you want to learn how to do technical analysis, this is a great place to do it. We have nearly 800 people going through this course, and everything in this course is going to help you immensely. So check that out in the link in the description. There's a $40 off coupon code down there as well. All right. Ifeni said unsubscribe. Ifeni, I don't know what I did to piss you off, man. I'm just saying that I don't agree. I don't know why you're so upset. You know, I wasn't the one that put you in timeout. That was the mods. That wasn't me. Um, all right, bro. Well, I hate to see you go, but you know, I didn't really, I didn't really do anything. <laughs> Angor has subscribed to the channel. Welcome to the channel, my friend. Very happy to see you here. Um, Emery says, okay, okay, I'll try the Discord again. Yeah, guys, I really like the community over there. Right now, it looks like Bitcoin has had a little miniature breakout and is moving into another consolidation pattern, actually. You don't see this happen a whole lot. Um, and this is just a really short-term chart, and I can't go any lower on the one minute, uh, on the one second, excuse me. But um, this very well may have a, a breakout come relatively soon. We'll see what happens, guys. Even if this doesn't break bullish, I think the next couple of days for Bitcoin are going to be relatively bullish as people start realizing, hey, this major news story broke, especially tomorrow morning when all the YouTubers start uploading videos about it, because of course, I'm going to have to talk about this in tomorrow's video as well. There's going to be a lot of bullish sentiment around that as, as other parts of the world that aren't awake right now start waking up and they say, oh my goodness, BACT is going live. Um, as a lot more people start to become aware that this is going on, they are going to get a lot more um, buying pressure. They're going to start buying up a lot more Bitcoin. It's going to cause the market to drive higher. We were just talking to someone in the Discord, in the chat here who is unfortunately very upset for reasons that I'm not very sure of um, about how news drives price action. And this is something I do want to bring up, guys, is that there seems to be this conception between some people that and we are going to look at some RSI figures. We are going to look at some other technical indicators here in a second. But I do want to bring this up, and I'll leave the price up over here so we can see what's going on. It does look like we're having a little miniature breakout to the downside right now. Um, I want to show you guys what exactly news can do to the chart. Guys, this red line right here, I drew this a little earlier in the live stream. If you just tuned in, this red line is the very minute that this news story broke on Bitcoin on uh, uh, Coindesk. As far as I'm aware, they were the ones to break this story. I don't think anyone else got to this before they did. The very minute, 
I mean, down to the minute, guys. This wasn't like within the same hour. It was the very minute that this new story broke, this new uptrend started. The very minute. If you need any kind of proof that major news stories can cause major moves in Bitcoin, you have it right there. The chances of this being corollary and not causal are astronomically low. As we can see, it actually seems like we're going to break to the upside now. I am quite happy with the long I set right before the live, right before the beginning of this live stream, and I am very much looking forward to this. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's catch up on chat here. Let's see what's going on. Not sure. Um, yeah, there's two Emery's in chat. Uh, Jeb, do a live stream where you've consumed three pots of coffee and two Red Bulls. I may have to go make myself a cup of coffee just to see what it's going to do to make some already feeling pretty well. Uh, Jeb, you can't please everyone, bro. I'm pleased anyway. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. It's, you know, whatever. Um, Iron Man came to the Discord earlier. Yeah, he's been in there for a while. Uh, sorry, Jeb, I'm talking over the chat. <laughs> no, you're fine. Hey, guys. Um, like I said, if you are interested, make sure you check out the Discord server in the description down below. There's probably a few of you guys that have already joined. Let's see here. I do want to go ahead, and I'm going to try to find some other articles on this to try to get some more news. Um, let's see if anyone else has done an article on this just yet. Looks like Bo uh, Cointelegraph has. Let's see. We got another one here, too. I want to get both of these articles up and read these on stream real quick. Uh, we got NewsBTC.com covering it, and we also have Cointelegraph covering it. These are going to be saying some of the same things, but sometimes uh, one, news store, uh, one news site will leave out something that the other news sites have included. So I'll go ahead and read both of these real quick on stream. Like I said, guys, I am keeping an eye on the price chart. I am keeping an eye on the number up here. So I will keep an eye on if anything starts moving while we are reading this news. Right now, Bitcoin is at $10,410. And I do highly encourage you, especially considering the stream delay, to have the chart up on one of your screens for yourself. I guess we're going to keep looking at this because Bitcoin is moving right now. We're at $10,414.58. Let's see if that wants to update. If any orders come through, uh, $10,415. Even this is on the Coinbase chart. We're at 10443 on Bitfinex and we are very clearly having a breakout there as well. Let's go ahead and catch up on chat for a second. Um, coffee, just, just skip straight to cocaine. Yeah, no, I don't do that. Uh, let's see here. I felt you biting your tongue last night when it started getting political. Yeah, Dre was in the chat, guys, uh, in the in the chat, and they started talking about politics. I was like, I really want to weigh in, but I just can't. Guys, let's see if we can get to over 100 likes. Go ahead and smash that like button, guys. I'm really excited about what's going on on Bitcoin. I'm really excited about this news that is breaking, and I would also be really excited to see us get over 100 likes. Also, guys, if you are new here, if you are new to the channel, you are new to the stream, make sure you smash that subscribe button and that notification bell so you'll be updated every single time a new video goes live and a new live stream starts so you can be caught up to date on live technical analysis on Bitcoin and news updates as they roll out. Guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification button. Anyway here, uh, Jeb, Jeb Opinion, buy now versus dollar cost average over the next 12 months. Uh, what's your gut tell you and what would be the most advantageous? My gut tells me to do both. And the reason for that is because I don't know what's going to happen over the next 24, uh, excuse me, over the next 12 months. But I do know that five years from now, $10,400 is going to be a very low price. So I like buying in bulk, but I also do like the idea of dollar cost averaging. If you want my take on it, I don't dollar cost average. I simply buy a lot of Bitcoin when I think it's a good time to do so. Um, and something like now or Monday, depending on where Bitcoin is, might be a good one as well. Jeb, one day do a political stream. I'll donate, I swear. Guys, you couldn't donate me enough Bitcoin or enough US dollars or anything to get me to do a political stream. You know how many people I would ostracize if I put my own political opinions out there? You guys, I would lose so many subscribers. It would be, it would be, the, it would be the coming of Christ if I did that. I am not doing that. <laughs> no way. Um, will the real Emery please stand up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's two of you guys. I noticed that. It's really funny. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and move on to this news here. Bitcoin does appear to be breaking bullish. Once again, just as we had expected, if you guys have been here in the live stream for a little while, you'll know that we've been calling bullish and I currently have a long position open. Never mind, we're going to stay on the chart because Bitcoin is moving. I want to read more into this news story and bring you guys more having to do with this, get you guys some more information, but I also don't want to miss what's going on on the chart right here. I need to figure out how I can live stream two screens at once. That's what I got to figure out how to do. Let's give it another five minutes or so to watch the chart and see if this develops into something 
something major because I feel a lot of tension in the market. I feel that these two consolidation patterns, and in fact, we could kind of boil this down into one consolidation pattern, is really starting to break bullish in a way that's going to be very advantageous for Bitcoin over these next couple of minutes. I do have a question for you guys. Are you currently in a long position on Bitcoin? How are you trading this news story? I'm really interested to hear what you're doing in relation to this. Let us know in the chat. Jeff has over 9,000 opinions on politics. Yes, I have plenty of them, but I don't share them on the channel. Uh, Ross Coken, uh, Co Conuts, Ross Conuts has just donated 99 cents. Thank you so much. That's going right into the Bitcoin fund. Um, smart Jeff, stay out of politics. I'd like to get Starbucks with you. Absolutely, dude. If you're in Florida, maybe we could do that. Uh, let's see here. Donated a dollar. Thank you so much for that, guys. If you want to support the channel and keep the business here going so I can keep bringing you guys daily updates in the videos and in the live streams, make sure you smash that subscribe button. But you can also hit that do uh, donation button right below where it says say something right below the chat box. You can donate down there and that does go directly towards funding the business because there are expenses that come with the YouTube channel. It's not just like I'm not just like one of those channels where I just kind of sit behind the computer screen and talk. It does take money to run this because there is payroll, there are, there are expenses and everything. So I do appreciate that. I appreciate that a whole lot. Hoddle for life, says Emery. Emery Herkman's is the Emery that is the meme dealer in the Discord server. And guys, there we go. Just as I said, we're looking bullish on Bitcoin. I didn't want to miss anything. We are moving. We're at $10,465 and change. We're moving up. Let me go ahead and get the volume up here so you guys can keep an eye on that. does look like we're having a little bit of a move with the volume as well. I want to see a lot of bullish volume come in. We even saw the traditional uh, pattern where Bitcoin volume will taper off here as the market is moving through a consolidation pattern. Guys, remember that this was a consolidation pattern that was a bull pennant of this move. So this would be expected to break bullish. We'll see exactly how, how far it breaks bullish. Uh, I'm not necessarily convinced that this is going to like moon Bitcoin to 11k or anything, but this could be major. I do want to keep a close, close eye on that. Like I said, guys, if you're enjoying the live stream, hit that like button. I'm going to catch up with chat here for a second, and then we're going to jump into some more news having to do with back the culprit behind this move on Bitcoin. So stay tuned for that. 1371 Ray has just subscribed to the channel, my friend. Welcome to the channel, guys. If you are new to the live stream, you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We do daily cryptocurrency videos and daily cryptocurrency live stream to keep you up to date on what is going on in the market. Looks like my position over on Kraken is up uh, three quarters of a percent right now. I'm quite happy about that in the last half an hour. Um, Jeb, what part of Florida? I live in North Central Florida. I keep it, I don't get more specific than that just yet, though. After I do a face reveal, then I will. Uh, something like that I was kind of joking about, but that might be something for the future where I could have like uh, meetups with you guys. Um, Crypto Jeb, would it be possible that Bitcoin can go back to a ridiculous low before this year ends? What's your lowest logical price? My lowest logical price is not is $8,900. And the reason for that, I'll go ahead and show you for just a second. I want to get back here to the short term chart. The reason for that is because, as we've talked about in other live streams, the 20 exponential moving average. During bear markets, it's very commonplace for Bitcoin to come down to this moving average and get support on it and bounce bullish off of it. Right now, we have not seen Bitcoin pull all the way back down to that, so I could very easily see Bitcoin pulling back to $8,900 to $9,000 after this weekly candlestick closes in a few days. I could really easily see that happen. Whether or not that's going to happen is yet to be determined. But I could definitely see something like that happening. So watch out for that. If we fall below that, it's going to be very bullish and it will likely result in a crash much lower than that. I did a video on that. A lot of you guys didn't like the video because I was talking about something you didn't want to hear. But it is something that we need to keep in mind, guys. Um, I'm about to buy one soon. I wish I did $9,500. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I hope Bitcoin dumps so at the end of the month I can buy more. Yep. Uh, Andrea says, Hey, Jeb, love you. On the course, I got, sh I got short attention span. What are the juiciest bits, mate? I'll go back to the other bits after that. Like I said, really short uh, span of attention. I'll go ahead and dial on into that, guys. Like I said, there is a sale running on the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy right now, and I am watching the price up here. We will jump back real quick. But as far as the juiciest bits in here, I'll tell you my favorite videos that are in the course. How to plan and execute profitable trades, risk and rewards, a game of statistics and probabilities, gut feeling, and a fifth would probably have to be... It's so hard to choose. All these videos are so important, guys. Those four are definitely some of my favorites. Um... As far as the fifth one, it would probably be market sentiment or mass psychology. If you watch these videos in here, guys, honestly, that is easily worth the course price. That's linked in the description down below. There's a $40 off coupon code running on that. If you want any more details on that, you can shoot me an email or join the Discord server and talk to some of the people that are in CT2A. Um, I'm skeptically in a long, definitely not all in. I'm a little skeptically in a, uh, skeptically in a long because I'm not quite sure how major this is going to be. But a lot of times what you guys will see, I want to go ahead and bring this to your attention now so I don't 
have to pretend like I knew this later on. A lot of times what you'll see is that when a major news story breaks, you will see the first major pump as we saw here when the people that are just glued to their phones are watching the, are watching, uh, the news. And then what you'll see after that is that as YouTubers start live streaming, as more articles start coming out, these articles came out after uh, the after the initial CoinDesk one came out. Uh, came out. After you start seeing um, a lot more um, saturation of the market, more people realize this, then you kind of have like a second wave. A lot of times news will have one major pump immediately after the news breaks, and then maybe an hour or two later, you'll see a secondary pump. That's one of the main reasons we're live streaming right now, because I want to catch that on camera if that does happen. We did just have Leon Frank, uh, Leon Frank excuse me, subscribe to the channel. Welcome to the channel, my friend. Welcome to the live stream. <sighs> Let me catch up on my breath, guys. When I'm talking this quickly for 40 minutes straight, it does um, wear out my lungs a little bit. Um, hi, Idol Jeb. It's in Coney again from Orlando. Hello, Coney. Uh, people are taking profit a little bit, John. Yeah, yeah. That's a. I mean, that's going to be understandable. People are doing short-term day trades right now, and they're going to be taking profits on this. So that's one of the things that are probably slowing us down a little bit. Um. There's no way this thing falls under nine. Hopefully not, yeah. Uh, Back wants to buy in when it's cheaper. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and jump onto some more news here. I want to dive into some more of this. And by the way, guys, we have nearly 400 of you guys here in the live stream. Make sure you smash that subscribe button and make sure you smash that like button. Let's see if we can get to over 150 likes. I'm going to start reading this other um, article right here because I want to catch up on anything that I haven't been already acquainted with. These articles have come out during the live stream here, so I haven't been able to read these just yet. So we'll go ahead and do that right now live together as a family. All right, Bact announces September 23rd launch of U.S. Future, uh, futures and custody platform in the United States. Bact has announced the coming launch of its much-anticipated platform for daily and monthly futures contracts in the United States in a blog post on August the 16th. That would be today. Having, approval, uh, having received approval from the necessary regulators, the launch is scheduled for September 23rd. Let's go ahead and click back over here for a second because it looks like we're moving. Uh, we're looking at $10,481 here on Coinbase. We're looking at $10,500 flat on Bitfinex, guys. Looks like we are moving. We're moving very quickly on Bitfinex. We're up to $10,530. I know you guys can't see that because that's off screen. Bitcoin at $10,493 on Coinbase and moving $10,497. Let's see where this goes, guys. I had a feeling that another breakout was going to come. That's why I put that long in right before the stream started so I wouldn't have to do it while we were streaming. We just hit 400 viewers, guys. If you're enjoying the live stream, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm really looking forward to what Bitcoin does here following this news. We will get back to this and doing more research into what exactly is going on. But for right now, I do want to keep an eye on the chart. <sighs> Take some drink. I don't have a drink with me and I don't want to go and get one because I don't want to leave the chart right now. Bitcoin is moving and that is why. We're at $10,514 and $10,548 on Bitfinex. You guys know Bitfinex has a little bit of that Bitfinex premium. Um, whoops, I always like hitting the likes. Done your videos, always on point. You're legit. My personal opinion, keep up the good work. Thank you so much, man. Uh, VT, Outdoor, uh, VT Outdoorsman. Guys, we're definitely getting some movement from this. $10,509. I have a feeling this is about to pop off. We'll see what happens here. $10,508. Um, like Mike Johnson said, guys. Hey, guys, I know it's exciting that Bitcoin just hit 10 5 but smash that like button. Absolutely. We're going to come right back to this. I'm going to keep an eye on this. I will switch over as soon as I see some interesting movement happening. But I do want to try and keep us up to date with what exactly is going on here and what is moving this. I want to catch up on this because if you guys don't know... Um, uh, Ross said, how do you like a live stream? The exact same way you like a video is right below. Um, I do want to catch you guys up on what exactly is going on. We've had a lot more people uh, join the live stream here in the last couple of minutes as Bitcoin has and is still moving. And essentially what's going on here, guys, is BACT, which is owned by ICE, ICE being an acronym or an initialism for Intercontinental Exchange, the same people that own the $20 trillion New York Stock Exchange. That's why this is a big deal. They have just announced that they have all the approval that they need to finally launch BACT. BACT is essentially a is a um, U.S. based, uh, physically settled. That's a really big deal. We'll get to that in a little bit. Futures trading market that will be based in New York. They needed approval from the CFTC, which they have now gotten, and they also needed approval from the New York State Trust Charter, which they have now gotten. They've gotten both of those approvals. That's all they needed. Now they can go live. Now they can start launching that. Guys, ICE owns BACT. It's a subsidiary of ICE. 
ICE also owns the New York Stock Exchange. There's a few reasons why this is a big deal. One, it's because the same company that own, owns BAC owns a $20 trillion market capitalization exchange. Literally the largest exchange on planet Earth is owned by the same people that have created BAC. Another reason why this is Im important, guys, is because... BACT is going to be a major, and I do mean major, institutional on-ramp for people uh, in institutions, but also for retail investors, because what it is, is it's the first major um, exchange operated by a company that also owns other stock exchanges that is well-regulated. I mean, a lot of these cryptocurrency exchanges, they're great. I trust them. I know how to operate in them, but a lot of people don't. A lot of people do not trust cryptocurrency exchanges. A lot of people don't trust Binance or Coinbase or Kraken, simply because if you're not in the cryptocurrency space, they don't have a name. Something like ICE, when people hear that, oh, ICE owns, the uh, ICE owns the New York Stock Exchange, that has credibility. There's a reason why that's so important. Because there's a lot of people in traditional finance markets that are investing in the S&P 500 or the, Na or the Dow. I almost said the NASDAQ in the Dow. They're investing in whatever they're investing in. Guys, if they don't trust Bitcoin and they don't trust that their money is safe, and in a well-regulated environment because that's what they're used to, they're probably not going to invest in it, and they may not have even heard of it. Another reason why this is a big deal, guys, is because since ICE owns BACT and the New York Stock Exchange, they own both of them, that means that those two companies are going to work together. The NYSE, a very old, very, very, very high market cap exchange, is probably going to be working together very closely with BACT, which means it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if the New York Stock Exchange and ICE, which owns it, help to... Uh, help to promote back and help to promote Bitcoin. This is a huge deal. This is a gigantic deal. This news story first broke in August and it didn't have a whole lot of an effect back then. But now that we actually have a launch date on September 23rd this year and there's nothing stopping them from launching, this is huge. This is really absolutely huge. So guys, let's go ahead and catch up on chat for just a second and then we'll dive into some more news. Uh, we did just have Andreas donate $9 dollars and or nine pounds and 99 uh, whatever the smaller denomination is there. He said, thanks, mate. Uh, 9.99 pounds. Uh, thanks, mate. I have to sort out a few... I have to sort out a few days and go over the course a few times. Yeah, man, the course is a very big help. I hope that you guys are enjoying the course if you are in it. Like I said, guys, CT2A is about to go through a major revamp. The course is a great deal as it, as it stands now. I will... I mean, I... Tr I I love this product and the people that are in it love it as well. But there is going to be a revamp coming to it where I'm going to re-record all the videos in it. We're going to restructure it a little bit. I'm going to be moving around some of the information in here. We're going to be adding four or five new videos on new topics like shorting. We're going to be doing a video on Kraken. Uh, what exactly shorting and longing is. What is margin trading? What is leverage trading? How does that work? How are... Uh, how are um, how our liquidation price is calculated, a lot of that stuff. Also stuff with how to work with wallets. Everything that you need to know, if it's not in there now, will be in there very shortly. So check out the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. There's a link to that in the description down below with a $40 off coupon code. With that coupon code, the course price is $159 and you will get all of the same information that you will get in other courses that run over $1,000, guys. There's, over, there's nearly 10 hours of content in here. Uh, Carl Mercer also donated uh, $6.99 Canadian and said, I opened a leverage long immediately when I saw your notification. Thanks for the free money. Yeah, good call. Let me go ahead and look at my long. Looks like my long is up an, uh, a dollar, uh, excuse me, not a dollar and a half, one and a half percentage points right now. That's on 5x leverage over on Kraken. Uh, maybe after the live stream is over and after I close that position, I'll take a screenshot of that and let you guys know. Uh, we have also had a couple new people subscribe to the channel. We had uh, uh, Dumbu... Uh, Buena Sissy has subscribed to the channel and we also had Mario subscribe a few minutes ago. I'm sorry I don't want to butcher your last name. I can pronounce things that are that have uh, English characters but I'm not sure how to pronounce the C with the tilde over it. Um, so we'll see on that. Oh, let's see here. Hmm. Anyway, where's the like button in the live chat? It's right below the video my man. Check that out. Um, after I learned Bitcoin I didn't... Uh, Connie says, after I learned Bitcoin, I didn't work. I focus on my trading. That's cool. I don't have boss. Your video helped me idle Jeb. Well, thank you so much, Connie. I hope they have. That's the entire point here with the Crypto Jeb uh, channel. Um, someone asked, if you buy the old course, do you get the new course? Of course, yes, you do, guys. That's a question that I get a whole lot. One that when we go ahead and update the page for CT2A will also be included in that. If you guys are wondering, there's a few things that you should know. With CT2A, if you buy the course right now, you get access to all current and all future content. That means that if you buy the course now before the price increases in about a month and a half, you will get access to all current 
uh, all current content, which is very much worth the money already. And you will also get up to, uh, access to all of those updates without paying another dime. It's not a thing where I'm going to uh, release an update and it's DLC that you have to pay for. It's not like that. You pay for it once. You get all access to all current and all future content. Also, guys, there is a 14-day refund policy on that. You can check that out at the link in the description down below. If you're interested in the course but you don't know if you like it or not, you can try it out for 14 days. If you don't like it, shoot me an email, and we'll get you the money back to you. Let's see here. He's probably on his phone having to mess with where the like button is. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, hey, Jeb, was wondering if I sign up for your class. Do I get permanent access to your videos, or is it just for a time period? Ryan, that's a great question. CT2A comes with a lifetime membership. In fact, I don't even call it a membership because you get access to the content forever. There's no time period on it. It's not like, oh, 12 months from now, you have to pay another $159. You get access to all of this content now and forever. You get access to all current and all future content now and forever. If you buy the course with this one price, there are no future charges. Let me put it that way. I think that's the easiest way to put it. So hopefully you guys do feel good about that. If you're curious about whether or not the CT2A is a good investment, I'm going to say this and then we're going to jump back into the news. Join the Discord server down below. We have a great community over there anyway. And if you join us down there, you can talk to people that are in CT2A and get their take on it. You can uh, ask them what they have to say. I'll go ahead and tell you, they're going to say good things about the course. And the reason I'm confident in saying that is because they always do. I never see them complain about it. Give me a one in the chat if you're in CT2A and you enjoy it, by the way. Uh, Jeb, you can hook up multiple streams. Um, but you have to do some expensive equi uh, some equipment to do it. Yeah, I have a second screen. I'm reading you guys' chat on another screen. Uh, John says, thank uh, excuse me, Dom says, thanks for the shout out. Best in the game, hands down. Thank you so much, Dom. That's a very high praise, and I very much do appreciate that. Thank you so much. Oh, I found, oh, I found the like. I have to hide all, all chat. Now I can't get the damn chat back. I'm just going to smash my phone. Um, yeah, guys, if you are enjoying the live stream and you are enjoying uh, everything that's going on, make sure you smash that like button. Like I said, the ones in the chat are for people that are uh, in CT2A and enjoying it. Matt Dodds has subscribed to the channel, and so has Stefan Lettington. Welcome to this live stream. Also, welcome to the live stream, WJV. All three of them have just subscribed in the last couple of minutes. Welcome to the channel. Guys, like I said, ones in the chat are for people that are in the course and are enjoying it. If you want to talk to people about CT2A, you can check the Discord server linked down below. Anyway, guys, let's go ahead and dive on into some more news here because I was trying to read this and Bitcoin distracted me and started moving. Tim Warner says, great videos. Thank you so much, my man. All right, guys, let's go ahead and read through this. Like I said, I haven't proofed this because this I think this article came out right before I started live stream. I didn't have time to read it, but it's basically saying the same thing that our Coindesk article, the one that broke this story, said. Backed physically delivered futures have been the subject of a great deal of anticipation with the company initially announcing its launch in August of 2018. I remember when that happened, guys. That was a big deal back then. And it didn't have a whole lot of uh, effect on price action then, but it definitely was something that we were all looking forward to. Back then, Bax was supposed to be launching like November, December of last year. Uh, but anyway, here, um, if we continue reading on here, Bax physically delivered futures have been the subject of a great deal of anticipation with the companies initially announcing its launch in August of 2018 before being subject to repeated delays over compliance issues. Satisfying the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, the CFTC, has proven particularly challenging. The company began testing its earnest uh, testing in earnest on July 22nd, as Cointelegraph reported at the time. Guys, one of the main reasons that BACT has not launched is because the CFTC has been very, very unwilling to give them approval. So what happened, I'll go ahead and tell you guys what's going on here. What happened is that BACT went ahead and, and, and applied for the approval that they needed for the CFTC in such a way that if the CFTC did not accept or make any kind of response within a certain time period, then BACT would have automatically been um, act backed would have automatically been approved. So that's exactly what happened. They did that, and since the CFTC did not answer, they got automatic approval. That's how they got the approval from the CFTC. The major news story now is that not only have they gotten approval from the New York State Trust Charter, which was the last approving body that they needed, the last approving body that they needed, the last regulation that they needed to get over. Not only have they done that, they've now launched an official launch date. There's no reason to believe that this launch date won't go through. September 23rd seems to be set in stone. There's no reason to believe that that's going to be set off. They do have approval from everyone that they need. Anyway, moving on here. Per the announcement, BACT has hosted numerous events in New York and Chicago, cities critical to the U.S. futures market with CBOE and CME over in Chicago and everyone else over here in New York. 
They've also sat down with regulators from the CFTC as well as the Securities and Exchange Commission because they are serious about this, guys. Like I said, BACT is owned by one of the most influential shadow companies <laughs> that works in the background that we that, that is here. I mean, everybody knows about Facebook and what Facebook is capable of and Apple and Amazon. Everybody knows how powerful they are, but a lot of people don't realize how powerful ICE is considering they own the New York Stock Exchange. They do own BACT as well. BACT will be partnering with Intercontinental Exchange Futures US and Intercontinental Exchange Clear US to provide its futures contracts. If I'm not mistaken, I think this has to do with custody uh, because that's, like I said, one thing that is very important for BACT and one thing that you should know as a trader and an investor and an entrepreneur in this cryptocurrency space you should know that BACT is physically settled. There have not been physically settled, settled futures until now. What that means is that when people are trading Bitcoin, they are trading actual Bitcoin. It's not a derivative. They're trading real Bitcoin. And what that means is that when people are buying, they are buying physical Bitcoin, which means that they are going to move the market. It's not a derivative. That's a really big deal, something that people don't talk about a whole lot. This is not a derivative. This is not a derivative. This is physically settled. Big deal, guys. Emery says, so I'm back, had to eat dinner. Well, welcome back, guys. Let's go ahead and catch up on chat just a little bit. Um, wait a second. Let me check that. I don't I don't trust that. But I am going to check. Um, uh, let's see here. I think someone's trolling us. Uh, let's see. Um... Bitcoin by PayPal. Can you give us any? Uh, can you give us a link to an article that's saying that? If that were to happen, that would be a big deal. But I don't think they can even do that. To be totally honest, the like button is the thumbs up icon. Yeah, guys, make sure you hit that like button if you are enjoying the live stream. We have nearly 200 likes, almost 460 of you guys here in the chat. I'm really enjoying talking to you guys. I'm also really enjoying looking at the breakout that I have a feeling is about to happen in the next five to ten minutes or so. So make sure you go ahead and smash that like button. Um, ICE is launching Bitcoin futures and cracking down on illegal immigration. Yeah, no, ICE, um, the immigration, um, whatever enforcement agency, ICE is not the same as the ICE Intercontinental Exchange. That's uh, Those are two different entities, to be very clear. Anyway, let's go ahead and finish this article out here so we can move on to the next one. Um, I think this is covering everything that we've already seen, but I haven't read this and I haven't had time to off stream. So I want to go ahead and read it to you guys and catch some of you up who have joined the stream since the beginning about 55 minutes ago. Anyway, institutional services and custody have been a growing market in crypto, with major U.S. exchange Coinbase announcing the addition of Zappos institutions into its clear into its custodial operation last night. After the announcement, Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong commented on the major rise in institutional clients coming from crypto services, saying, "Quote: Whether institution uh, whether institutions were going to adopt cryptocurrency or not was not an open question about 12 months ago." And he's absolutely right; it really wasn't. It was not a guarantee. Now it's not either, but it's a lot more certain. I think it's safe to say now that we know the answer. We're seeing $200 to $400 million a week in new cryptocurrency deposits coming from institutional customers. Guys, Brian Armstrong being the CEO of Coinbase knows exactly what he's talking about. I guarantee you that he has reason to say that since he is the CEO of one of the largest exchanges in cryptocurrency. He's bullish on Bitcoin. So is everyone else. Bitcoin is a very bright future. I've always stood by that. You will never find a video on the channel of me saying that Bitcoin is going to die or that Bitcoin is going to fail. I've always said I've always had full confidence in this market and that will never change. I'm fully confident on Bitcoin. There's a reason that I have so much of my net worth in Bitcoin is because I fully trust this market and I am looking forward to the future, guys. It's a really big deal. If you guys want to learn how to do technical analysis on these markets and gain that confidence, a great place to do so is C22A. Check the link in the description down below. Looks like Bitcoin's having a little bit of a dive here. Like I said, I thought we were going to have a bit of a breakout here in the next five to 10 minutes. I said that about two minutes ago out of this consolidation pattern. I didn't draw it, but I saw it on the chart. Looks like we're having a little bit of a dump from that. We will see what happens. Um, uh, great stream. Love your dedication, Jeff. Thank you so much, Janet. I'm really enjoying the live stream. I'm loving the 483 of you guys who are here. Welcome to the live stream if you just tuned in. Bitcoin's trading at 10.5 because BACT has just announced that they are going live, guys. We're seeing a lot of big news on this. This Coindesk article that broke the news story, let me show you exactly where that happened. Right here on this red line, if any of you were ever wondering whether or not news can move markets, whether or not news can, br can bring FOMO in people and get people excited, and that buying pressure can move 
move markets. If you were ever wondering whether or not that was something that can happen, let me direct your attention to this. This is the very minute that this back news was launched. The very same minute. 11.18, as you can see here, that is UTC minus 4, so universal time. Um, uh, this was 15.18. Check out what time this article launched. 1518 UTC. You subtract four from that, you get 1118 because I'm four, uh, four hours behind uh, Greenwich Mean Time. The exact minute that this article launched, the very next minute we started seeing bullishness from it, and we've seen a quite substantial rally resulting from it. A 4% rally in two hours, guys. Big deal. Who's the first to say smash the likes? Was it Superman? I don't know. Um... You do have great stream timing. Yeah, guys, I was sitting down. I was about to just kind of chill out and take the rest of the week off and just ease myself on into the weekend. I was about to actually play some Minecraft, and uh, I see someone in the chat saying, oh, my gosh, Bitcoin has just, um, or backed has just, uh, are you really drawing flags in the one-minute chart? Yeah, I am, guys. Check this out. I mean, I drew one right here, and we saw the breakout of it. They do work on the one-minute chart, especially when there's this much volume in the market. I was sitting down just about to just kind of chill out, and I saw someone in the Discord server, and uh, they were talking about backed. Like, oh, well, cool beans. I guess I'll do a live stream. I'll do it early today. Mike Johnson says, this is such horrible timing they released this article, Jeb. How come they didn't release it when we hit 12K? <laughs> that would have been the extra push we needed then. Yeah, absolutely. It would have been great it, uh, would have been great if the New York State Trust Charter had have given them this approval um, a little bit earlier. It wasn't necessarily the time that they launched this article. It was when I well, excuse me, actually announced this, kind of, and that kind of went under the radar, but back when I had, excuse me, Coinbase, Coindesk went ahead and picked this story up right around then. Moon, moon, moon. <sighs> you should do a random comment giveaway of your course once a month. That's a great idea. You know, I've given the course away to some people before. In fact, someone, I remember like a year ago, not a year ago, because the course launched 11 months ago, um, like, nine ten months ago right when the course had launched someone messaged me saying um talking about how they couldn't join the course and i just went ahead and gave it to them and uh very happy about that and me a trial for the idea <laughs> backstreet backstreet's back right yep absolutely guys let's go ahead and read this article also this is one that's in a little bit more detail like i said i haven't proofread these because a lot of these have uh, come up during the live streams. I haven't had time to read these yet, but we're going to be reading them live. I want to see what this has to say. It's a little bit longer than the other ones. Uh, the last part, we've already talked about how backed is um, this news is moving the market, so we'll probably skip over that. Uh, but Bitcoin price has been trapped in a symmetrical triangle pattern for weeks now, bouncing back and forth the top and bottom re uh, support and resistance trends, making increasingly lower peaks and higher troughs. But breaking news surrounding backed may have just ended the bearish pressure for the time being. Exactly, guys. Just as Bitcoin was flirting with a potential breakdown from the triangle after rejection from $12,000 that we've been talking about here, the crypto asset has spiked nearly $500 in a matter of minutes following news that Bact has received official approval from the CFTC and also, as I don't think they mentioned here, the, uh, the New York State Trust Charter. That's the big one that we're looking at here. Bitcoin's moving down a little bit right now, but it's not that big of a deal. Um... Geniuses play with Legos for control. Jeb plays Minecraft. Are you uh, absolutely man? I remember st I played Minecraft when that game came out. I will not shrug from that. You guys can you guys can make fun of me for that. I do not care. OMG, I'd love that. I'm too poor for the course, man. We might do something like that. We might do something like that. Uh, play Fortnite like a real man when you plays. No, I don't play Fortnite. Um, you guys all probably think I'm 18 or something now, or like 20. Yeah, I'm a, yeah, I'm in my early twenties. Totally, yeah. No, I'm not just some old. I'm, I'm totally not just some old man who plays a bunch of Minecraft. <laughs> uh, wasn't able to get the course, says David. Um, it, it, were you not able to get the course because of some reason other than what was going on with the course? If it was something to do with like a um, a payment processor issue, that's happened a few times. If you need any help with anything, David, shoot me an email at cryptojeb at gmail dot com. That's cryptojeb at gmail dot com, and we'll get that worked out for you if you have an issue over there. Uh, let's see. Now we got everybody arguing about Minecraft. <laughs> Link BTC, please. I don't know if you were talking about that, but there is a, a, a Bitcoin donation link in the description down below if that's what you were talking about. Um, looks like someone joined CT2A while we were streaming, actually. Henry, welcome to the welcome to the course. If you guys are interested in learning about everything you need to know about cryptocurrency technical analysis, check out the link in the description. Anyway, guys, let's go ahead and keep going. 
let's go ahead and keep going here. Uh, just as Bitcoin was flirt, okay, we already talked about that. Bitcoin price bounces from ten thousand dollars to nearly ten five in a matter of minutes, and my long position is only uh, about up about one percent. I'm not, I'm not, I'm okay with that. One uh, percent, and that's before the because of the way Kraken works. That's actually five percent because it doesn't calculate the leverage on that. Um, I like it when Jeb finds something so funny they can't even talk. Yeah, that happens a lot, like my Minecraft exchange. <laughs> Yeah, um, Bitcoin's price action has been a wild ride ever since the crypto asset was rejected at twelfth at thirteen thousand eight hundred dollars towards the end of June. Since then, it's been nothing but bounces and rejection at each top and bottom of a symmetrical triangle pattern that's been forming over the course of the last three months. And what he's talking about here, we'll go ahead and show you on the chart, would be this right here. Bitcoin is starting to form a bull pennant. I want to bring that to your attention as well. I'll probably end up doing a video on that. Someone mentioned that earlier on in the live stream. And as you can see right here, this is a bull pennant. Those typically break bullish. Hopefully this one does. Hopefully this backed news helps us to do that. As you guys can see, Bitcoin was having a little bit of a pullback right here. The bulls are like, hell no, we're going to the moon. And they're pushing it back up. But that's what he was talking about there in this article. Bitcoin price has been flirting with the bottom. We'll get through all that. Um, I want to see... Uh, Backed is why Bitcoin bounced back up. Crypto analysts everywhere were clamoring for the price per Bitcoin to fall lower after a strong rejection at $12,000 this month. Yeah, guys, as little as three hours ago, I was pretty bearish on Bitcoin. This news very well may change that. We'll see how well this news goes over, how much bullishness comes from this. If we can reestablish a new uptrend, that'd be great. We'll see what happens. For right now, I'm feeling a little bit more bullish. We'll see what happens. This month, but Bitcoin's bull run in jeopardy and caused the price to collapse by as much as twelve as much as twenty five hundred dollars at one point before bouncing back upwards to ten thousand dollars where Bitcoin has been struggling to find support. Uh, just, as th just as things began to look grim once again, while Bitcoin's price teetering on the edge of 10K and ready to test low 9,000s once again, the news of backed broke and Bitcoin price spiked. Backed CEO Kelly, o Kelly Loeffler revealed the news in a company blog post. Backed would be finally ready to launch its custody and physically delivered daily and monthly Bitcoin futures contracts on September 23rd after getting the green light from the CFTC, which to clarify, they do have the green light from the CFTC. They don't need to go and get it. Loeffler also revealed that the firm had begun onboarding and testing with market participants and will continue to do so leading up to, up to the September 23rd launch, barring any additional snags that may run into before the launch. Uh, Bact has been regularly cited as the catalyst to start the next crypto bull run, and that catalyst appears to finally be here, and the recent spike in Bitcoin might only be the start. Guys, I completely agree with that analysis. I think this is a gigantic development for Bitcoin. I really think this is going to be something major. Check out what's going on here. If you guys haven't, if you guys don't know what's going on with Bact, if you don't know everything about Bact, I can't go over everything in this video. I can't get into what futures are. I can't get into, I can't get into everything in this live stream, but I will say this. Bact is a very big deal. There's a reason why everyone is so excited about it. And it's not just some other random news story. It's not just some other news story that doesn't mean anything. It's not insignificant. It's probably one of the biggest news stories of the year. And I'm talking about the one that broke two hours ago. I'm talking about the the live the news story that we're doing this live stream on. The fact that Bact is launching, the fact that it now has an official launch date, it's officially confirmed by everyone. Yeah, guys, this very well may be the biggest news story of the entire year. And that's not an exaggeration. <sighs> Let's go ahead and check what's going on in chat. TA2 Web Service says, I wouldn't have known about this news if I weren't subscribed to your channel. Thank you, Jeb, for coming on at noon. Absolutely, guys. If you're enjoying the live stream and you want to get kept, uh, kept up to speed and up to date on what's... Yes, Nat Evans, this is live. If you guys want to get caught up to speed and kept up to speed on what's going on in the markets, make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure also you hit that notification bell, guys. The 10 minutes it takes for you to go and check your subscription feed and see a video going live or one of these live streams going live, you could have missed half of this rally. Guys, we didn't manage to catch much of this in the live stream. We started streaming right around here, but you caught, you could have caught a lot of this. I was calling this breakout right before this happened about half an hour ago. Hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell. You will get updated every single time something happens. I will try to live stream anytime something major goes on. And also, by the way, if you subscribe to the channel, you'll also get a shout out for subscribing. Your name will pop up on screen. So make sure you do that, guys. Ah, let's see here. 
Let us see here. So we've kind of exhausted these two news stories. I'm going to close both of them because they've both gone over the same thing. Give me a one in the chat if you'd like for me to go over again what exactly is going on. Give me a one in the chat if you'd like to have another rundown of why this is such a big deal, why the market's moving so much, what backed is. Give me a one in the chat if you'd like for me to go over that again. <clears throat> Could be the biggest news story for all of Bitcoin's history. You know, this is definitely probably in the top 10 or top 20. This is a really big deal. If you're a subscriber, it comes up right at the top of my phone every time. Yeah, that's not if you're subscribed. That's if you hit the notification bell. So make sure you have that notification bell hit just like uh, VT Outdoorsman does. Uh, looks like we're kind of forming this consolidation pattern that we saw here into a little bit of a longer term one. I'm going to go ahead and move this. We don't have a bottom on this yet, so I'll go ahead and readjust that. Looks like we're getting a lot of ones in the chat, so I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep up with chat here for a second, and then we'll do a complete re uh, a complete um, revamp of what's going on here. If you want to see that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. We're getting a lot of ones, so that's what we're gonna do. One thousand strong has also just subscribed to the channel. Welcome to the channel, my friend. Welcome to the live stream. Getting a ton of ones. So what that means, guys, is that we're about to go over what exactly is going on, why the market's moving so much. We're about to do that. Why is everyone talking my Coinbase password? <laughs> That's funny. All right. All right. I'm going to read chat for just a second, and then we're going to go ahead and do that. ETF will be huge, if not huger. Yeah, probably. Oh, my bad misinformation. No, it wasn't misinformation. It was just a mistake. You're fine. Uh, first, they ignore you. Then they laugh at you. Then they fight you. Then you win. Meaning, I feel like this is a huge victory for Bitcoin. Absolutely. So, guys, what all those ones in the chat were just a second ago. Uh, hello, Brookalinos. Welcome to the channel. Uh, well, excuse me, not welcome to the channel. Welcome to the chat. You've been on the channel for a while. Good to see you here. So, guys, what we're going to do real quick is we're going to do another revamp and uh, another um, recap is the word I was looking for of what exactly is going on here. A lot of you guys have tuned in ever since the beginning of the stream, so you might not be sure exactly what's happening here. I'm going to go ahead and turn the chat off for a second so I won't be looking at chat. Guys, just remember to hit that like button, hit the subscribe notification bell, and join the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy if you haven't already. So what we're going to do, like I said, is we're going to go over exactly what's happened here. Like I said, I won't be looking at the chart at the chat for a little while, nor will I be looking at the chart. If something major happens on the chart, I will bring that up. Essentially, what's happened here, guys, is that we've just gotten one of the biggest news stories of the entire year. Arguably, the very biggest news story of the entire year. There are a lot of people, including myself, that can make the argument that what we've just seen happen is going to change the course of Bitcoin for the next several months. And for probably for the next several years, guys, the entire catalyst of this Bitcoin bull market has been institutional adoption. It's been a lot of retail coming in, but it's also been institutional adoption. Especially not so much from the like libertarian-minded folk like us who are in the cryptocurrency space, but especially from the masses. We're trying to get mass adoption because we've kind of already gotten most of the adoption that we're going to get from the people that we have already seen um, start adopting Bitcoin. But what we need now is we need the retail investors who are working in the stock markets and in commodities and you need the institutions to start coming into, into the market. And that's what we've just seen, guys. So essentially what we're looking at here is a subsidiary of a company named Intercontinental Exchange. This subsidiary named BAC has just become clear to launch. Intercontinental Exchange is a, is a company that owns another company. That other company would be the New York Stock Exchange. You may have heard of them considering the New York Stock Exchange is worth over $20 trillion in market capitalization. That's not million with an M. That's not billion with a B. That's $22 trillion worth of market capitalization, as in over 100 times more valuable than all of Bitcoin. Excuse me. Yes, over 100 times more valuable than all of Bitcoin. They own one exchange that is worth nearly a fifth of all of stock market market capitalization in the entire planet. Okay, you understand that? Intercontinental Exchange owns the New York Stock Exchange. They have also set up a company named Backed, and Backed is now clear to launch. Essentially what Backed is, is it's a platform that's going to allow futures contracts that are physically settled. I'll explain what that means in a second. They're going to be launching a platform named Backed that will allow for physically future, excuse me, physically settled futures contracts that will be very well regulated. So what they've done is they've had to get approval from a lot of different government agencies, like the New York State Trust Charter. That's what this news story is about, and the CFTC. They got this approval because they want to be in the same ballpark that the New York Stock Exchange is in. They want to be in the same kind of area that the that, that, uh, CME and CBOE and everyone else is in. 
This is not another exchange like Coinbase. This is not another exchange like Kraken. This is a well-regulated cryptocurrency exchange that has approval from all of these different um, entities. And what that means is that when people see backed, they see this well-regulated and they see that it's owned by Intercontinental Exchange, which also owns the New York Stock Exchange. You guys know that, let's say uh, you really like a company. Let's say you're like me and you really like Starbucks coffee. If there's some other coffee brand you're probably not going to buy it. But if you find out that Starbucks actually owns that other coffee brand, let's just say that there's XYZ coffee brand and it's just some kind of generic coffee brand. And you're like, I don't really want to try that. I like my coffee. But then you find out that your favorite company, Starbucks, owns that company. They own XYZ coffee. You're, you're probably going to be more like, okay, well, there's some brand recognition there. I'll go ahead and do that. So ICE owns the New York Stock Exchange. They own Bact. That's going to bring a lot of trust to Bact and that's going to bring a lot of traffic to Bact. Now, there's a few things that have gone on here. The news story that we saw today broke at 1,518 hours, uh, 1,500 hours, 18 minutes UTC. And that's very important because we saw this rally that we've seen here on the chart. As we can see here, this red line, this is when that news story broke. At the very minute, I went ahead and checked. This is exactly four hours behind because we're on UTC minus four where I'm charting. At this very minute, on this line where my cursor is and where this vertical line is, that's the very minute that this news story broke as represented on the chart. You can see what's transpired. This is the minute chart. This is not the hourly chart. This is the minute chart. This is what's happened in the last two hours and 15 minutes or so. This is a very big deal. Guys, it's a very big deal. So what we're also looking at, um, here's a couple of other uh, implications that this has. A lot of people, I remember when this broke, uh, that back was going to be a thing. It was, I want to say it was like halfway through August of last year. It was almost exactly one year ago that news that back was coming broke. And they didn't really have a deadline, but they were saying maybe sometime in November or December, that being November of December 2018. A year later, we finally have a launch date. It's September 23rd because they've gotten all the approval that they needed. The reason it took so long is because the CFTC, the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, a very important regulator, uh, regulatory body in the United States, they had to give approval. And they kept you know, not giving approval. So what BACT did is they went ahead and they submitted their application for approval. And what happens is that if a government agency doesn't respond to an application for approval, then a lot of times it gets automatically approved after a certain deadline. So what they did is they did something called automatic approval. They submitted the application and backed, got approved from the CFTC like that. As far as I'm aware, the CFTC can't just risk, uh, can't just renege on that approval. They have their approval now. So that's really all they needed. A couple other reasons why this is a big deal, guys, is because the um, backed being owned by ICE and ICE also owning the New York Stock Exchange, this is something that I've been thinking about during this live stream, is just this, guys. If the New York Stock Exchange is owned by the same people that own BACT, there's probably going to be a lot of collaboration there. There's probably going to be a lot of advertising at the New York Stock Exchange. There's probably going to be a lot of collaboration between BACT, the Bitcoin futures market, and between the New York Stock Exchange. Hundreds of thousands, no, I take that back, probably tens of millions of people trade the New York Stock Exchange. Guys, that's a big deal. If even a tiny percentage of them, of them learn about BACT and they start hearing about Bitcoin, they start getting that word in their head, that's going to be a big deal, guys. The power of FOMO and the power of people entering the space who weren't here before can be very easily seen. If we look back to the end of the bull market in 2018, 2017, excuse me, a lot of this price action came from people who saw Bitcoin being discussed on mainstream media. I remember Bitcoin was being talked about on the Ellen DeGeneres show and all these other talk shows. Uh, Dude Perfect did a video um, where they were making jokes about Bitcoin, like, lighthearted jokes about Bitcoin. A, a, a lot of people were talking about this and a whole lot of uh, retail interest got involved in this. A lot of this was built off of retail interest, not even institutional. And you guys got to re re uh, realize like 90% of the valuation in this market is probably in institutions. So most of this was built off of retail and we still saw Bitcoin go to 20,000. When we start seeing the institutions come in as we have and as we are, that's going to be huge as well. I'm going to go ahead and catch up on chat here because I've been rambling for a little bit. Um, a secondary breakout may be on its way. Absolutely. Is $20 trillion a lot? Jesse, let me put it this way. There are not $20 trillion bills on the entire planet. The reason that they have that much money is because it's not physical money. $20 trillion is the gross domestic product of America. The global gross domestic product is $80, $80 trillion. So yes, $20 trillion is a whole hell of a lot of money. Bitcoin is worth less than a hundredth of that. To give you perspective, one exchange... One exchange in stock markets is worth a hundred times what Bitcoin is. All right. It's always time to be a Bitcoin maximalist, says Rob. 
Guys, if you are enjoying the live stream and you are enjoying this news and you are also enjoying this breakout that we're watching, um, make sure you hit that like button, guys. Let's see if we can get to 300 likes real quick. Oh, excuse me. And also, guys, if you are new here, make sure you smash that subscribe button, guys. If you want to be updated every single time something new happens in Bitcoin, oh, excuse me, every single time something new happens in Bitcoin, if you want to be kept up to date on daily technical analysis, you want to be kept up to date when news breaks, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. Give me a one in the chat if you learned about this backstory because of this live stream. Guys, there are a lot of people in the chat that learned about this back breakout because we were doing the live stream here. If you were subscribed to the channel and hit the notification bell and you saw the live stream as soon as it went up, you would have known this was going on. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. It's so important that you guys can keep up to date with what's going on in the technical and the fundamental landscape for the channel. Make sure you do that. I'll give you a shout out if you subscribe. It should flash up on screen also. We did have a couple people subscribe a few minutes ago also. Uh, Quinny Butler subscribed and DeLuca Photography subscribed. DeLuca, what are you doing over there? You unsubscribing and resubscribing? Trying to troll me? You telling me, DeLuca, that you haven't been subscribed all this time? DeLuca's a long time a subscriber to the channel. One, one, one. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Um, Martin says you're my hero. Thank you so much. Uh, I shared your channel on my Bitcoin study group along with this news. Great channel, Jeff. Thank you so much. Looks like we've got at least twenty people in the chat saying that they heard about this news story because of the live stream. Uh, my parakeet told me about it. Okay, well, guys, go subscribe to Spartacus Maximus's parakeet. Ron says, thanks, Jeb. Absolutely, guys. It is my pleasure watching the market move with you guys. What was the back news story? Just came in. Uh, Kangers, I just went through all of it. You missed it, man. Just go ahead and back up the live stream a little bit and put it on 2x speed to catch up. Um, everybody's saying that you know, essentially what it is, Kangers, is that Backed now officially has approval from all of the bodies that they need. They are launching. There is a deadline set, and they are going to be launching a little over a month from now. Big deal. Uh, Deluca says, I, I unsubbed from everyone and took a break from crypto. I'm back. Oh, okay. Gotcha. 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 Jeb, what is the chance back does nothing for the market? I think what it's going to be is it's going to be a big movement over the next couple of days and then over the next couple of days again when it actually officially launches. And from there, it's not going to be very obvious what it does. It's going to be a lot more sublime, uh, a lot more subliminal. Uh, the effects that it's going to have on the market is going to be harder to see exactly what's going on so what it is is it's going to be kind of a passive just boat buff to cryptocurrency as more people join the market it'll be harder to tell um what exactly is doing when that happens um jeb what's your advice on taking profit now you know i'm in profit i'm uh with the leverage i'm using i'm up about five percent um, I'm not taking profits right now. I want to see how this goes. I want to see how this breakout goes. If this starts breaking bearish, I might take profit. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I, I can't really weigh in on that though. Uh, it's good to know someone has Bitcoins backed. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, Jeb, I want you to be in my Bitcoin study group, please. It's on Facebook, a closed group. Get, shoot me an email. After the launch of the market, it'll sell off. We might see a dump after that with people taking profits. We did just have a, new, a couple new people subscribe. Uh, Enzo Garcia has subscribed to the channel. And I said a couple, so if you want to be the next person to subscribe, make sure you do that, guys. Daily cryptocurrency updates. We just had like 50 people in the chat. And it's hard to get 50 people out of this many people watching to... Um, how much leverage do you normally use? Uh, 5x because I'm getting used to trading on Kraken for when I start showing my trades on uh, live streams. I use more on, on when I'm using other exchanges, though. Um, Jeb, what does it mean for folks like us in the USA? Will we be able to trade on Binance? Binance is launching Binance USA. I haven't looked into it a whole lot because I've just completely moved to another exchange. I'll, I'll go ahead and look into that for you guys and make a video on it or talk about it in a video. Uh, Jeb, want to call this upcoming breakout high or low? What do you think we're getting at the end of the triangle soon? I think we're probably going to break bullish out of this, guys. News stories, a lot of times, you'll see them break in a couple different waves. You'll see one break and then another break. I might be wrong on that. Don't go making a trade just because of my opinion. I have a feeling we're going to break bullish, but we'll see. Anthony says, is this live? Yes, it is live, Anthony. Can you predict this upcoming breakout? Guys, I'll look at the technicals. Right, here, right now, the technicals I don't think are even that important. We're looking at a bullish cross here on the minute chart. Um, I, I think that we're going to see a bullish break here. Honestly, is Backed finally live? Backed has announced when it's going live. It will be going live on September 23rd. September 23rd. We have a launch date. Um, let's see here. 
Careful trading on Kraken. They're notorious for wicking in your stops. Yeah, I'm not. Wa I don't use stops when I'm actually watching the market live, which I am right now, so I'm not worried about it. But that's a good call. I've heard other people say that. Uh, Mike Johnson says, like the video, guys, especially if you're new and you're only here because of the news. Pay your respect. Jeb does this every day for free, guys. Yeah, make sure you smash that like button and also that subscribe and the notification bell, guys. And if you guys do want to, by the way, if you've gotten value out of the live stream, it does really help if either one, you join the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy, guys. We have a lot of people in here, nearly 800 people in CT2A that are always learning more about the cryptocurrency markets. If you want to join CT2A and learn everything you need to know to become uh, to go from a very new trader in this market to a fully experienced person who knows what they're doing in these markets. If you want to do that, check the link in the description down below. There's a $40 off coupon code, August 2019. You enter that at checkout, you get $40 off. If you want to learn how to trade these markets, this is the place to do it. Give me a one in the chat if you're in CT2A. Um, Oh, sorry, Jeb. Will we be able to trade on back like we do on Binance? But it's going to be a little. It's not going to be exactly the same as Binance. It's going to be a lot different because it's a it's a futures market, and we don't really know what the interface or anything looks like. But you will be able to trade on it. It's going to be a futures market. Um, let's get a like spike, ten plus. Absolutely, guys. Yeah, let's see if we can get to three hundred likes. And also, guys, like I said, if you are enjoying the live stream, you can either join the CT2A with the link in the description down below, or if you want to, there is that little rectangle with a dollar sign in it under the chat box and you can leave a donation there if you're feeling happy if you're in profit if you want to do that then go right ahead and do that how much is ct2a ct2a is 159 dollars with the coupon code guys with all of the with all the content is there all these people that are saying one every single one of the people in the chat saying one right now they are in ct2a you can talk to any of them about what they think about the course and i have a feeling i know what they're going to say they're probably going to say they like it i'm not putting words in their mouth they have to say that but i think they're going to say that because I'm very happy with the product, and they seem to be also. It's $159, and you will get access to... Guys, there is so much information in here. This is such a wealth of knowledge, and it's so underpriced, too. There are a lot of other courses in this space, I will admit that, but let me tell you something. A lot of them don't cover anywhere near as important of information as we do cover here, and a lot of them also, they don't cost $159. They cost over $1,000. So if you want the best return on your investment, this is the place to do it. Check the link in the description down below. You can also join the Discord server or talk to any of these people that are saying one, and you can see what they think of that academy. <sighs> Probably going to be for accredited investors or select institutions first. It might be, Jesse. I think they want to go with retail on it. Um, How is a futures market different to what we use at the moment? Got, futures is something that's... Honestly, futures is very confusing and hard to explain. I'm not going to get into it in this video. I'll probably do a video on it. When futures start becoming bigger in the cryptocurrency space, I'll definitely make a video on futures in CT2A. And I might make a video on futures on the channel. It's something that doesn't... Uh, happen a whole lot in the Bitcoin market, so I haven't talked about it a whole lot. Frankly, it's a very confusing thing to explain. It happens a lot in commodities based on locking in prices and what the future prices of things are going to be. Futures happen all the time with things like grain. I'm not. I'm not even going to try to explain it right here because it's confusing, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna misquote something. Um, I do highly encourage you guys to check that out on your own, though. It does look like we're having a bullish cross here on the MACD. We did also have a couple people subscribe that I have to shout out. Benson Alfred and Radiant Charbs have both subscribed to the channel. Welcome to the channel, my friends. If you are new to the channel, make sure you smash that subscribe button, guys. And also make sure you hit the like button as well. I don't plan on doing much trading, but I want to learn more about technicals. I might buy the course still. Brian, if you're on the fence about it, let me tell you this. There is a 14-day money-back refund guarantee. If you join CT2A and you decide it's not for you, shoot me an email and you will get all of that money back. And you will still get to watch less than 30% of the course material before you do that. So you can get some of that information. Heard it here first. Thanks, Jeff. Absolutely, Crypto Geezer. Also, Brian, like I said, if you want to join the Discord server and talk to some people that are in the course, you can uh, you can do that. And also, the course is I mean, it's the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. It teaches technical analysis, so it's a great uh, it's a great resource to learn that. Jeb, uh, David Brown has a very important question for me, guys. One that I'm going to have to dodge, but nevertheless, I will read it. Jeb, are you a Rothschild? Do the Rothschilds tell you to influence your viewers? <sighs> you got me. I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. 
I can't say. Anyway, it looks like we're going to have a break out here in the next couple of minutes, guys. We're probably going to be winding down the stream if nothing interesting happens here. But that's not going to happen for more than probably about half an hour. We'll probably keep going for another half an hour. How far is it going up today? What do you think? That all depends on what happens here in the next 10 minutes with this breakout. This is really going to determine it. I want to see Bitcoin go quite high, but this news story, it could either be, it could either have massive ramifications or it might have no ramifications at all. I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, <sighs> getting close. Oh, excuse me, I got a yawn. Getting close now will break any minute. Brooklynos, can you give can you give or explain a small thumbnail about the difference between between leverage and futures? Yeah, leverages and futures are completely different. Leverage leverage is when you're. It, I will try to explain it, but it's something that's very confusing. Um, <laughs> Jeb, are you anti-Semitic? No, I'm not. Uh, hate to be a downer, but one day high is only fifty dollars higher right now than yesterday. Yeah, let's go ahead and look at that real quick. Let's go ahead. Uh, I don't know about that. Not on the exchange I'm looking at. It doesn't look like it's $50 higher. It looks like it's about um, $250 higher. Oh, you mean the WIC. Okay, gotcha. Well, with the WIC, yes. More. Pl um, I just want to sit here and watch what happens with the chart, guys. I'm really interested to see what happens. Looks like we're actually having a bearish breakout. Okay, that's interesting. All right. On that note, I'm going to go ahead and Let's see here. Went ahead and closed my position over on Kraken. Let's see, how did that go? Looks like we were in about just under 5% profit. Awesome. Looks like it hadn't actually started moving on Kraken yet, so I got it right before the breakout. How's the low volume look at this moment? Yeah, let's look at volume real quick. Ooh, yeah, that's one thing I'm not happy about. Let's look at that. Yeah, I should have been looking at that, but I was busy, you know, doing the live stream thing. Um, Bitcoin's volume was quite bearish, uh, quite low there, and therefore quite bearish over the last couple of minutes. Low volume is noteworthy. noteworthy. Absolutely, I, I opened, I did a short on Bitcoin last night and got about a 10% gain on that with leverage because I was able to see that the volume was very low. Um, Back's goal now will be to sign up clients for its launch. However, as reported by the block, some of their large prospective clients still don't have permission to trade physically delivered Bitcoin. Breaking 10.6 is very bullish. Yeah, if we can break above 10.6, that would be very bullish. We've talked about that level several times. Bitcoin looks like it's moving to the downside now. Interesting. Okay. I had a feeling that this would go a little bit further. That's why I just closed my position in profit. Hopefully you guys are able to do the same. Guys, the market is moving in real time and we are moving. We're at $10,427. Make sure you are watching your own chart. I want you guys to realize that there is stream delay. It's about 30 seconds of stream delay. So what's happening that you're seeing right now happened 30 seconds ago when you're watching this. So make sure you have your own chart up as well. <sighs> Guys, I'm going to talk a little bit less here for the next couple of minutes. Just kind of watch the chart because I need to catch up on my breath. I've been talking at full speed for an hour and a half and I just completely run out of breath. You get winded after a while. <sighs> Guys, I'm really enjoying the stream. If you are enjoying the stream also, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button and hit that notification bell. We broke resistance at 20... 6,000 subscribers last night. I'm very happy about that. Yeah, I managed to get my sell position in right before, right before, <laughs> right before the bearish breakout. I caught it just in time. Pretty happy about that. Oh, yeah, I made a good amount of Bitcoin on that trade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll see if I can get a screenshot with that that doesn't um, jeopardize any of my personal information and show that to you guys later on. Let's see here. Uh, what would you look at that? Your minute chart triangles worked again. Yeah, they do. People are making fun of me for my minute chart triangles, but guys, they do actually matter. Triangles are some of the easiest things that you can trade. Very important. Mike Johnson says, guess TA isn't real. Yeah, exactly, guys. TA totally isn't real. People say that all the time. Triangles work. Um, that low volume in triangles, guys. You look at volume, you look at triangles. Very easy to tell a lot of times when something's going to happen. Um, I didn't catch it quite in time right after the break. I like a minute after it. A few minutes ago, I was looking at the volume. As you guys, most of you were here when I said that. We were looking at the volume and noticed it was pretty low. 
low volume of the triangle like this, a lot of times you're going to see a bearish breakout from that. You lucky bugger, move faster on Bybit. Yeah, I caught it just in time, guys. Um, I can't bring the chart over to show you, but I caught it just in time. I can't bring the chart over because there's there's uh, personal information on there. But I caught it just in the nick of time. <laughs> Dumped as soon as one minute MACD went sub. Oh, it did, didn't it? Yeah, check that out. Let me respond to that. There we go. I'm sorry about that. Uh, you need a parakeet. I do need a parakeet, guys. If you didn't know, parakeets are mythical beings that will tell you when to trade the market. It's the same thing as Rianu Keeves. They will tell you. Good call, Jeb. Thank you so much. It all works on time intervals. I call them wedges. Yeah, good call. Thank you. Yeah, we managed to call that dump. I made profit from your alert. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> Moving average... Convergence death. <sighs> We're all about to go to the Mars, bro. Jeb, why Kraken versus Bybit? For one reason and one reason alone, because I'm allowed to use Kraken in the United States, and I'm getting used to using Kraken's interface for when I start showing you guys my trades, because I can't just be showing that I am breaking their terms of service on YouTube. Bybit is not allowed in the United States, nor is BitMEX. So that's the only reason that I don't use those exchanges, or at least I don't officially use those exchanges, is because I don't want them shutting me down when I start showing my screen on camera uh, in the future. That's why. Oh, man, the Chids had... Oh, man, he knows what to do. He says, in time to invest in BitConnect, my brother. You know it, guys. It's time to go buy some BCC. Back when BCC stood for BitConnect coin instead of Bitcoin crap. Excuse me, Bitcoin cash. I totally misspoke there. Um... Let's see here. Let's go ahead and give Coin Market Cap an update, a refresh, and see what's going on. Coin Market Cap still showing Bitcoin being up four percent on the day. We've had a little bit of a correction here, but we've been up so much that it is perfectly okay. Ah, guys, give me a one in the chat if you're excited for this news. Give me a one in the chat if you're excited for backed finally launching. I am so excited. Cracking UI is difficult to use. I'm not a fan of it to be totally honest, but I am getting used to it. Uh. It's okay. It works. It's definitely not my exchange of, of choice. I do like the look of Bybit. <sighs> oh, excuse me, guys. I'm getting the yawns. I, haven't had, I have eaten literally nothing all day today, so I'm very tired. I'm going off of zero food and one root beer. That's all I've had today. Crypto de Castillo. Castillo, excuse me, put a bunch of ones in the chat. Everybody putting ones in the chat. Crypto da Castillo has subscribed to the channel. Welcome to the channel, my friend. If you guys want to join the channel and you guys want to get updated every single time some new news comes out, make sure you smash that like button. New to your channel, bro? I'm excited as hell right now. Just bought in more. All right. Bitcoin dominance at 69%. Nice. Kraken's order books are thin. Be careful. Yep. I am very careful. Hello, Jeffrey from Brooklyn here. Hello. Go eat something, Jeb, like a nice fat steak. I might go and eat a steak. I just made enough profit off of that to buy a bunch of steak. I might do that. Let's see, what was my profit on that? It was 10%. Oh, oh okay, yeah, I'm happy about that trade. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, bought there. Yeah. Hey, you know, that, that was a pretty good trade. I didn't catch the initial move. It would have made a whole lot more money if I had caught the news the second it came out, but... Crypto Jeb says, "Go grab something, man. Subs um, substance. I do have to go and br and um, I do have to, I do have a prior obligation that I have to leave for at three o'clock, which is fifty six minutes from now. So we'll probably live stream for about another half an hour. Me too. I need to order a pizza with this price action. Yeah, guys, totally. We need to get. We need. I need to figure out some of you guys that are like that live close to me, and we gotta get like a a uh, a crypto community going in person. That'd be really cool." Breaking bearish and heading back to 10k now. Not necessarily. Bitcoin looks like it's trying to put a bottom in, and Bitcoin looks like it's going for a bullish cross here on the MACD. That's why I'm watching this right now. I want to see this bottom cost. Uh, I want to see this bottom out and move to the upside again. Oh, excuse me. Guys, like I said, if you are new here, make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell, guys. 
Really enjoying hanging out with you. We're probably going to be going for about another half an hour up till about the two hour mark, and then we're going to wrap it up. I do just want to kind of hang out and watch the live stream here for the last little bit. Guys, like I said, if you are new here and you've just joined the live stream, I do want to get you caught up on what's going on. Essentially, Backed, owned by ICE, the same people that own the New York Stock Exchange, has just announced that they've finally gotten all the confirmation that they need to go live. This is a big, big deal. They're launching on the 23rd. We finally have an official date that's probably not going to be changing much. This is huge. The world needs more millionaires to get the economies going into crypto investors. Will, will physically settled futures help pump or dump the price? I'm not sure. That depends on what the state of the market is. I think it's going to exacerbate whatever volatility we're already seeing. Futures are not necessarily a bullish or a bearish thing. People point make it out to be, but it's not. Um... One for the news, but want to dip as I'm itching to pull the trigger on a purchase. Be careful about trying to call the bottom, guys. The bottom was a couple days ago. We might not go back down there. I think we're going to, but we'll see what happens. The name Jeb is a German name which descended from the Rothschild. Actually, Jeb is a combination of my first and middle name, <laughs> which I'm not going to say on stream because then you can track down my my everything. Ritan Zeka has subscribed. Yeah, no, Jeb was just actually a combination of two different names. I didn't know it was German, though. That's really interesting. Which is descendant from the Rothschild. Huh. So you weren't joking earlier when you were asking if I was a Rothschild. No, I'm not a Rothschild. I am not that wealthy. It can only pump it because they need physical coins. Yeah, that's another thing. To fill out those warehouses, they need to buy physical Bitcoin. That's why it being physically settled is such a big deal, guys. Over here, it's talking about physically settled Bitcoin, guys. This is a physically settled... Uh, contract market. It's not a derivative. It's not a derivative. It's physically settled. Huge deal. <sighs> Justin Weber, Evil Jet, nope. Definitely deserve a stake for that. I kind of do want a stake. Ah, you're, you're making me want a stake. Goodness gracious. You missed the bottom by eight months. Lol. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a good, yeah. <laughs> Jeb is usually short for Jebediah. It is usually short for Jebediah, and I've actually considered changing my name to Jebediah in the past, but it's not actually from the name Jebediah, funnily enough. Spelled with two Bs. Jeb from Jebediah is spelled with one B. Is Bybit your fave? I've never actually used Bybit. Um, I've heard good things about it, though. It does seem to have a good user interface. So I'm not going to weigh in on that, but do check it out if you're at all interested. Conspiracy theories with the Rothschilds. <sighs> oh man, I'm getting all kinds of yawns. Jeb is a descendant of Stegosauri. That's right, guys. Stegosaurus was my ancestor. Please explain physically settled. Absolutely, BNR. So you have two different kinds of markets. You have derivatives markets and you have physically settled markets. In a physically settled market, it means that there is physical Bitcoin that they're going to be using at their warehouse. What that means is that they have to go onto the over-the-counter markets or onto exchange to buy some Bitcoin so that they can then use that Bitcoin in their exchange. The reason that's important is because a derivative just moves the price action based off of what the market is doing. Like some of these ETFs, like for example, the ETF that the Winklevoss twins were working on, that's a derivative. That's not physically settled. Derivatives markets are worth over a quadrillion dollars, but that's not real money. It's fake money. So what it means that it's physically settled is that they have real Bitcoin in real wallets in a warehouse. It's not like a it's not like a warehouse warehouse. It's in something called a warehouse where they stored this commodity called Bitcoin. Since it's physically settled, there's only so many Bitcoin in the world. When they start buying up Bitcoin to fill out that warehouse, that's going to provide buying pressure to the market if they do it on exchange, and unfortunately not a whole lot of buying pressure if they do it on the over-the-counter markets. Um, but that's going to bring a lot of buying pressure to the market. That's a big deal. It being physically settled is a huge deal. Because it means that it has a lot more potential to move the market in a fundamental way rather than in a reactionary way. What I mean by that is that uh, people buying and, uh, and um, put, exerting bullish pressure on the futures markets is going to help the bulls in the Bitcoin markets. The same thing for the bears. The quadrillion. Yeah, the, 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 the derivatives markets are huge. They are gigantic. Much better looking interface and less angry wicks. Yeah. Um, Nat Evans says, love this channel, much love. Thank you so much, man. George says, I'm not exactly a TA guy, but from my perspective, DCA is the best strategy for now. 
yeah, you know, DCA is a great way to start. It's um, it's a good thing for everyone to do. I don't personally do it because I know how to trade and I know when to I, I know when to buy large sums of Bitcoin because I can tell when the market's oversold. But especially if you're newer to the space, do DCA. It's a good idea. Uh, Retin Zika has also subscribed about six minutes ago. Sorry for forgetting the shout out. I didn't see that, so welcome. And also, I don't care. Ninety seven ninety seven has subscribed to the channel. Welcome to the channel, guys. If you want a shout out and you want to be updated as news and new updates on uh, the chart happen, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Jeb, please convince my mate Ryan sitting next to me that the time to buy is now. If you're talking about the long term, that's a very, very easy argument to make. I'm not going to talk about the short term for that because I can't be as sure. But as far as with the long term, now's a great time to be buying Bitcoin. In my humble opinion, this is not financial advice. Don't go suing me if this exact thing doesn't happen. But in my humble opinion, I do think that now's a great time to be buying Bitcoin for the long term. What I mean by the long term is what the IRS means by the long term. That's over a year. We're talking long term capital gains, taxes type of trades. If you're buying for the long term, Bitcoin will probably be going back to $20,000 and far beyond. We're seeing all kinds of bullish news story like backed launching happening all the time. Guys, this is not slowing down. We're seeing all kinds of bullish fundamental news stories come into the space. It's huge. Guys, there's all kinds of stuff happening. We have a lot of institutions dumping literally hundreds of millions of dollars into the space. We just read an article about an hour ago here on stream of the CEO of, um, of Coinbase, Brian Armstrong, talking about how hundreds of millions of dollars from institutions a week are coming into the space, and the same thing wasn't happening eight, um, eight months ago, 12 months ago. We have all kinds of money from them coming into the space. There's all kinds of development happening on the regulatory front, on the institutional front. As far as on the media, there's all these YouTube channels on, on, um, on YouTube. We're helping to bring people that are newer to the cryptocurrency space. Give me a one in the chat if in the last 12 months you have joined the cryptocurrency space because you saw a YouTube video about it. Give me a one in the chat if in the last 12 months you've joined the YouTube, you've joined the cryptocurrency space because you saw a YouTube video. That's how I got enrolled in the YouTube space because I saw a YouTube video on cryptocurrency. I'm like, wow, this is really cool. So I joined the space because of that. There's so many bullish fundamentals happening. We're, we're going to start seeing some ones come in. Uh, let's see here. Someone said, can we look at the one hour chart with the 100 EMA? We will do that. I think we looked at that on the last night's live stream. That's not the moving average we want. That's the moving average we want. The 100 EMA is also one that's giving us a lot of support right now. Guys, I've also shown you guys the 100 simple moving average. That's this gray line giving us a lot of support. But if we look in here at the hourly chart, that's what he wanted to see. Look at all these ones coming in, guys. Look at all these ones. Everybody who's typing one, you see that? That's why I had you do that. I knew there were, I knew it. I knew that. I knew it. Guys, I knew it. Look at this. Look at this. Look at all those ones. I knew it. That's why I said it. I freaking called it. All these people there are saying one. Those people are saying one because they joined the cryptocurrency space in the last 12 months because they saw a YouTube video on it, guys. We've only been in a bull market for four months or so, so that means a lot of those guys joined during the last bear market when there wasn't a lot of hype. Now imagine what happens when a lot of hype co starts coming back into the market as the bull market continues to take off. There are going to be so many people and therefore so much money and therefore so much bullish buying pressure coming into the market as this thing starts, to con starts and continues to take off. The next 12 months, the next 24 months are going to be crazy. Let me mute my phone because someone is blowing up my DMs. Um... That was the person that I, have, that I have a prior obligation to, so I do have to leave in about half an hour. Look at all those ones. Jeb, can we get a shout out to some of the some of the 2016 adopters? Yeah, man, I joined in 2017. If you join the if you join uh, the cryptocurrency space in 2016 or before, give us a one in the chat. Um, Jeb, do you have a do you use an Android app to get price alerts? I don't. I just I wish my phone would stop going off. I just keep an eye on the chart. I always have the chart up somewhere on my on my phone. Or not on my phone, but on my one of my monitors. I have two monitors. I'm probably thinking about getting a third one. Let me mute my phone. I do apologize. That is a very important personal matter going on, so I do need to keep an eye on that. Uh, someone says, Jeb is the master. Thank you so much. This puppy is creating a big bear flag, potentially. Let's look at this. 
Um, maybe. Yeah, that does kind of look like a bear flag. Look at all these ones. These are people that joined the that joined the joined the cryptocurrency community in 2016 or before. These are all people that have been here longer than I have. Totally off topic, but I heard yesterday there was an earthquake in Yellowstone. Uh oh. Yeah. End of 2017, yep. If you guys don't know, I joined the cryptocurrency space on July 31st, 2017. I remember the day very, very, very well. 2010, bought the most expensive weed I've ever smoked. That is hilarious, Nat. Oh, no. <laughs> and also, for all those people who just said one in the chat who have been here in 2016 and before, give me a two in the chat if you wish you had a bought more back then. <sighs> I joined Bitcoin when I was at uh, when Bitcoin was at 19. Got wrecked and made a comeback this year because I dollar cost average. I finally sleep well at night. Good to hear Jeffrey Diaz. I'm really sorry that happened to you, man. Joined early 2018. Bought at $2,800. Huddling in all the way. Nice. Uh, I'm not sure when you got to bought at $2,800. We never went down there, but. Now, I have a feeling that every single person who pressed 1 in the chat earlier is now going to press 2. Um, they're pressing 2 because they were in the... Sur they were in... Uh, they joined the... Um, they joined the cryptocurrency community before the end of 2016, and they're pressing 2 because I asked them to do that if they wish they had a bought more back then. Who here else survived the 2018 bear market? I survived the 2018 bear market and uploaded a video every single day during it. That was... straining. <laughs> Price I paid to learn the game. Absolutely, guys. You're going to learn a lot from your pain. That's what you got to keep doing is keep subjecting yourself to pain. Because you know what? At the end of the day, it's cliched, but it's true also. What doesn't kill you will make you stronger. At least a lot of it will. You're going to get scarred from some things. Some things aren't going to make you stronger. Some things are just going to hurt. But guys, the more you go through, the more pain you feel in your life, the more, the more that you're able to overcome the stronger you're going to be and the more you're going to be able to take. Because, guys, let me tell you something. I have two friends, and these two friends are not engaged, but they're dating and talking about marriage, right? One of them has had the easiest life, and one of them has had the harder life. I didn't mean to say the easiest life, the easier life. One of them has had the harder life. And... It's really interesting seeing the difference between the two of them and how they act because one of them has had just an unspeakably hard life and the other one has had a much easier life. I mean, I'm not saying their life is easy, but it's been a much easier life. They haven't had to go through some of the things that I went through and some of the things that their, that their uh, partner has gone through. And it's really interesting seeing the difference between the two of them. And I think to myself, I was the, I was the kind of person that had the hard life. I had the hard, up, I had the hard upbringing. I, had the, I mean, I had food on the table and everything. But it wasn't easy. I mean, I had problems with social. I, I had problems with money. It, it's never been... Well, it is now, but it's never been that you had everything you needed, right? And let me tell you something, guys. If you've had an easy life, if you've had it easy, if you've never made a, a major loss in Bitcoin, if you've never had something hit you when you were down, if you've never been betrayed, if you've never been kicked when you were if you've never been screwed over if you've had it easy you have a crutch because the things that hurt you the things that bring you down the things that hurt your spirit those are the places that your strength comes from think about this when you're lifting weights in the gym when you're lifting weights in the gym, do you get stronger from lifting a one-pound weight or from lifting like a 15-pound weight? You don't get stronger from lifting a really, really light weight. And the same thing is true that you don't get strong from lifting a weight that you can't even lift in the first place. So I'm not saying that having the hardest life in the world is going to make you stronger. That's going to scar you. But having a good balance of hardship while also getting everything that you need and not being damaged in a way that you can't recover from, that's really important. So you guys who have had it hard, or you've been screwed over in Bitcoin, you've been betrayed, maybe you have an uncle or a sister or a mother or something that, that, that treated you wrong.
use that in cryptocurrency as your strength. I survived the 2013 bull run in 2014 to 17 bear market without ever selling a coin. Good book to read is The Flinch covers this topic. Absolutely, because in The Flinch, they talk about when you're getting into a shower, like a cold shower, David Cullen, you start stepping into a cold shower. The Flinch talks about this. Um, you start to step into a cold shower, and there's a little moment of hesitation. Just that, it just lasts a couple seconds, but you hesitate. Right before you do something, you hesitate. And that hesitation is where everything happens. That's where all the goodness happens. Um... Because if you can overcome that flinch, you can learn not to flinch. That's going to be great. Let's see here, guys. Let us see here. Looks like we got some fake news in the chat. <laughs> pretty sure that's not true. I'm going to check just in case, but I'm pretty sure that we got a troll. Let us see. Um, yep, totally not true. Didn't think so. <laughs> Coinbase is not getting shut down by the U.S. government. Looks like we're moving into another consolidation pattern here, guys. If, uh, Price Jones says shouldn't have sold Jeb. If Bitcoin breaks above some of these more recent highs at like 10, 450, I'll have a line up there. Uh, when can we draw lines right now? These are the lines. These are the lines right here. If Bitcoin starts breaking bullish out of this, I'll probably open up another long. Part of the reason I closed my long was because I do have to leave in about like 15 minutes. And I mean, not just leave the live stream, leave my house. And I don't like having trades open when I'm out of the house. Someone asked going up or down. You know, honestly, this is this is really interesting. We were going up and now we're we've had a bearish breakout. So this could really go either way. This might end up looking like a a uh, head and shoulders pattern, actually. Oh. Oh, excuse me, guys. Guys, if you are enjoying the live stream, even though it's slowed down a little bit as I get very tired and hungry, because I haven't eaten anything today and it's two in the afternoon. Um, make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell as well. Normally we're a little bit more lively and daily videos do go out every single morning. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. And if you haven't already, make sure you check out the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy as linked in the description. <clears throat> I do want to go ahead and look at a couple other technical indicators here. We're going to look at the 20 EMA on the four hourly chart. Looks like Bitcoin has managed to break it, at least for the time being. Guys, this is a big moving average. Are you a beer or wine person, Jeb? I like wine. It's a little more classy. I'll drink both, but I prefer wine. Um, Bitcoin is above the moving average here. And uh, over here, we can see Bitcoin was in an uptrend on the four hourly, and it was above. Source on back news, Richard, that's a great question. This right here, this article by Coindesk, I'll go ahead and put this into the chat. Uh, that right there is the news story that broke this. Go check that out, and then you can read up several other places, but that's a good place to read up on that. This moving average right here, I just went on Twitter and checked. It's not true. Yeah, Big Mike, I also checked. It's not true. Dude's spreading fake news. Uh, right here, uh, this moving average is a very important one. It's the 20 exponential moving average here on the four-hourly chart. When Bitcoin is above this, it's a very, very big deal. It means that you're in an uptrend. Right here, we were below it. If we could see Bitcoin get above this, I would probably be opening a long-term long position. Long-term meaning the next several days. You prefer your whiskey neat? Yeah. Let's see. Oh, guys, I'm so hungry. I have to go get food while I'm out getting, my, getting this person. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not going to have anything to eat until like 4.30 unless I leave right now. Mm. Now that's classy, yeah. Jack and Coke. Mark Johnson had to do a double take of my twin. All right, guys. Well, you know, this has been a great live stream. I've really enjoyed hanging out with you guys. 
we're definitely going to do um, why not several years next several days of course I'm very bullish for the next several years but it looks like we may be entering a shorter term uptrend uh, if we get above that four hourly EMA on the uh, the 20 EMA out on the four hourly the next several days will probably be pretty bullish if we can manage to do just that I'm gonna give it just a few more days excuse me just a few more minutes here to see if we break out and then we're gonna be wrapping up Uh, we did just have a couple new subscribers roll in. Actually, I need to give a shout out to. We had Baga Ghost uh, seven minutes ago. Sorry about forgetting the shout. I didn't see you. Subscribe to the channel. And Laurent number twenty three has subscribed to the channel. Rowdy Day Ke uh, Kaiser and Max Joey uh, Siroc have all subscribed to the channel. Welcome to the channel, guys. If you are new here, like I said, smash that subscribe button. It looks like we're about to have a breakout. I'm gonna go ahead and open a long real quick. Um, I'll do that much. That much not sell buy i almost opened a short position by accident let's do that off screen buy in confirm buy cool bands all right got a buy order on the books i can go ahead and close that real quick and not lose hardly anything on it so i guess i am going to stay here for a few more minutes to make sure this breaks bullish and if it does then i might leave this or just take quick profit just a tiny little trade here guys open right around the place that i closed the last one actually bullish breakout me thanks slash hopes i think so too um, just going to eat and drink on crypto Jeb. Just going to eat and drink on live stream. Now I will drink on live stream. Not I mean I'll drink uh, anything but alcohol on stream. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna eat on stream. Thank you TA2 Web Service. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're not seeing any volume yet. I'm doing it, uh, Mike Johnson, because I can close it real fast. I mean, I can close this position with the click of two buttons and be down like 0.5%. And I've got a strange feeling this is going to break out. We'll see. How many hours ago was the back news? The back news was exactly, I'll tell you exactly how long ago it was. It was exactly three hours and nine minutes ago because I have it up on the chart when that came out. We got Mark Johnson and Mike Johnson uh, competing. see here the position is in profit um, yeah it looks like we're trying to break bullish here you could probably redraw this trend line something like that though so I'm not considering this a breakout just yet it looks like we might be rejecting back news within the last hour now the back news is about three hours ago JB on the five minute we're on the one minute chart right now so BTC futures already appear to be on COE okay um, no volume yet though Jeb yet you're right Wealthy people who have been through tough times are far more compassionate to those they see in need than those who are born into a privileged lifestyle. Ain't that the truth? And I'll go ahead and stick to my plan. If Bitcoin goes below 10, 420, I'll close that position with like 0.03% loss. Uh, five minute chart prepare for the breakout. It's like two hours. Yeah, but the back news broke almost exactly three hours and 10 minutes ago. We're twins, it's true. Oh, you are, okay, cool. Come on, Bitcoin, break out. I have to go and get food. I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry and I don't wanna leave you. Watch it, knowing Bitcoin, it's just, it's just gonna move all the way over here the next 15 minutes until this break out, just to mess with me. I know it's gonna happen, I can already tell. Come on, guys, that's your gut, that's my gut feeling talking right there. That's, that's Bitcoin trying to mess with me. Um. Let's see here. When someone else joined CT2A a few minutes ago, Mr. Percy and Victor and Henry also joined the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. If you're interested in that, there is a link in the description down below. Let's see. Mark Johnson says, I've listened to you daily for the last 10 months. Love you, Jeb. Thank you so much, Mark. Long time subscriber. That's so cool. TA2 Web Service says, man, I always forget to put in stop order. So glad you said something. Yeah, it's very important you have a stop limit. Um, I've already made the trade right now, and I don't think Kraken lets you put in a stop loss after you've already made the trade, so I'm just going to watch it. If not, I would have already just added it. Uh, oh, what? Mm, was that something? You trying to do something fancy here, Bitcoin? Uh, maybe. We're looking at the Coinbase chart right now, guys. Let's see. Come on, a breakout. Let's see it. Let us see it. 
I want to see a breakout to the upside. I should have already left because I need food. Not your gut feeling, but your stomach. This is my stomach talking. My stomach's telling me that, it, that I'm down to my last Satoshi and I need it. Order a pizza, stay with your computer. I have to go and pick somebody up in about half an hour anyway, so I'm going to have to leave no matter what. VT Outdoors says, have a great day, Jeb. Everyone, I'm off to get some food. Hasta luego. It was a pleasure having you on. Jeb, you can put a stop loss after an order, I think. I'm still getting used to the crack and exchange, so hopefully you're right. I don't see how to do it, though. I'm on the advanced exchange with the mark and everything. I'm not in there kind of crappy user interface to be honest but um no oh, yeah doing good doing good with profit let's see is there a way to set up a oh, i don't think there is i'll look into that hey it's in profit hey it's in profit every time you do a live stream you always have to leave to go get food hashtag food addict it's funny what i have a friend i'm, I'm at their house a lot i'm like every time i get there I'm out there half. Uber and pizza, bro. Steve Jones, I am so tired anyway, and I'm having a guest over at four also. So I have to go anyway. Just go to orders and put stop loss. Oh, you're right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> well, in that case... Oh, wait. Maybe I'll do it myself. Bitcoin looks like it's moving. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. What to, I don't know if I want to close this or put the stop loss or what. <sighs> okay, I see how to do it now that you said it. Yeah, Emery, I'm sorry. Nice work done so far, Emil. Uh, thank you so much. If you use liquid, you can set stop loss and take profit anytime after you open the position. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and confirm that sell with like 0.01% profit. Let's see. I'm going to go, okay, I'm out of the position. I'm happy about that. I'm okay with that. Looks like it's about to crash anyway. Now I want to open a short. Oh man, guys, I can sit here and watch this market all day long. This is so addicting. <laughs> Crap. Um... What time schedule do you have for your live stream? Normally, the live streams happen around 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Today, it happened a little early because uh, we had some big news stories. Yeah, this looks like a place for a short, not a long. I'm very glad I closed that. Locked in the, like, tiny profits. As j Rard said, let's get to 300 li Oh, wait, we already did it. Okay, cool. Guys, like I said, if you are new here and you want to be kept up to date with what's going on in the technicals and on the news portion, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. It's perfectly free. I promise I won't charge anything, but you will be told every single time something new happens on the chart and whenever the market starts moving as it is now. I knew I should have opened a short position like a second ago. I'm going to do it now. Ah, you guys are... No, you know what? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing it. I'm not trading. I'm not trading. Guys... Oh my goodness, I don't want to leave. You guys are keeping me prisoner here. Looks like it was a good idea anyway. Oh, guys, that is going to have to do it for today's live stream. I have very much enjoyed talking to you. This has been awesome. We've got a bunch of new subscribers come in while we were gone. We had a couple of donations also. Thank you to you guys who subscribed and donated. We also had Jan Orr and Matt Matt subscribe to the channel. I didn't catch those. Guys, I am going to go ahead and head off. I am starving, and I do have to go see this friend of mine. And one person I'm going to be seeing this afternoon is Taylor, our editor, because she's been out of town for three months. This is the first time I'm going to be able to see her since I was out in Colorado. So we'll be talking business and catching up and everything since we are also friends. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for today's live stream. I do want to thank each and every single one of you for tuning in. Guys, the conversation doesn't have to stop, though. Go ahead and join the Discord server with the link in the description down below. I'll be active over there later on tonight. We've got some great people over there talking right now. Looks like we do have a conversation going. Make sure you join us with the description with the link in the description down below. Anyway, guys, I do want to thank each and every single one of you for watching. As always, I've really enjoyed the last couple of hours that we spent here to dip together. But like I said, guys, that is going to do it for today's live stream. I do want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching, as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.